Hello, Smite fans. Happy Sunday and welcome into the SCC. We're in North America to start off this Sunday of Smite action. And it's the same setup as yesterday. And if you missed yesterday, we're going to have one SCC matchup. It's Trick Babushka up against Baskin and the boys to start off the day. And then we'll have a couple of the SPL matches later on. Mifflin joins me, though, to talk about the SCC. How you doing today, Miff? I'm doing pretty well. When you said it was Sunday, I kind of got a little bit of time whiplash. I yes. thought it was Saturday. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Fair enough. Easy, easy to do, though. Uh, but but this matchup here in the SEC, Baskin and the boys up against Trick Babushka, literally could not be more polar opposite when it comes to the standings. Up top, Baskin and the boys, three and one. Trick Babushka yet to find a win. Maybe needless to, to ask this question, but do you think Baskin and the boys have the edge in this one? You know what? Um, history has indicated that Baskin and the boys <laughs> might have the edge here, but we yeah. can't count out Trick Babushka. These guys have been around for a long time. I mean, Yuji's got a lot of competitive experience, as does Absolutely. Dater, Amoeber, Mineral. All these guys can play. I think right now the only thing holding them back is their team synergy. So as the weeks go on, I imagine they're going to continue to become stronger. But that said, Baskin and the boys are Baskin and the boys, so I'm going to give it to them 9-1 for today. And the last iteration of Baskin and the boys that we saw, Haddix masked Baskin, of course, Gino, and Meerkat. And I am curious, though. I mean, you look over in, in Europe, and there is discrepancy from even the first place slot to kind of everyone else with belt slap. This region here in North America is a lot more close-knit. Uh, do you think Baskin and the boys, despite having that one loss, they're you know still technically in first place, tied for first? Maybe an early loss kind of put that by the wayside do you have them maybe as your favorite in this entire region for na i do have to give it to baskin and the boys but for my money as far as scc goes in general i think belt slap is by and far just leagues ahead yeah <laughs> i think so uh what do you think if you're going into this one your trick babushka what's the crux maybe of this baskin and the boys lineup i mean is baskin really the focal point here is that who you maybe have to identify to give yourself an edge against these guys well the titular baskin is going to be the guy who's really propelling these guys forward however if right. i'm trick babushka i'm targeting what i would consider to be the weakest link on the team i want to build a lead somewhere i don't care if i have to throw sand in my opponent's eyes <laughs> so if i'm on trick babushka today my eyes are on meerkat unfortunately I don't want to call anyone out like that, but he is new to the sure. role. ADC, not his traditional spot. So I would definitely be focusing towards that long lane. And especially in Season 7, if you can put your long lane ahead, that opens up Gold Fury and all, all these other neutral objectives for you to take up. So, I don't know, man. Meerkat's going to have to watch out. Yeah, th this, one, uh, this one could be close, depending on which way Trick Babushka choose to identify maybe some weaknesses on Baskin and the boys. I am curious though, Mifflin, I mean, did you see anything yesterday in the SPL meta-wise that maybe surprised you from what we've seen in the SCC? Because that, that's obviously been a big conversation piece, I, I think. Over the last few weeks, all we've seen is SCC and their own meta-forming. And yesterday we got a look at the SPL. There were, you know, largely a bunch of similar picks. But is there anything now that you've seen in the SPL that you're surprised the SCC maybe hasn't picked up quite as heavily on? My, my trained jungler eyes noticed that the SPL was really highly valuing Thor. We don't see that in the SEC too often. And also, there were some interesting jungle starts. We saw junglers yep. starting on purple buff and then working their way right across the map or left, depending on if they're on the chaos side. So purple to red to back camps to blue to speed. That was something interesting yep. that I saw. But... Uh, I'm not sure if the SEC is quite ready to pick that up. It's only been about one day of SPL, so right. maybe they haven't quite adapted just yet. There, there's some ramp-up time to be sure on that one. We'll see if there maybe is some adaptation here in the SEC in game number one. We're going to jump to a quick break, get game one all set up, and we'll be right back. And just like that, we're back for picks and bans between Baskin and the boys and Trick Babushka. In Mifflin, I, I think even outside of the, the in-game meta yesterday, it was kind of fun to watch some of the SPL teams and, and where they might prioritize certain god selections on that maybe SPL tier list. And Kamazot still, I think, at the forefront of that conversation. We saw a little little interesting here and there. Uh, Baron locked in solo uh, at least once yesterday. Anything stand out picks and bans wise to you in the SPL yesterday that we might see trickle over here to the SEC? 
There was uh, the shift on focus to Thor that I brought up earlier that I think we might see here yep. as well. Uh, my eyes are on Hoonbots. We saw him a little bit under-prioritized compared to what we saw in the SEC through the SPL. Maybe they don't respect right. Hunbots quite as much, but I imagine the SEC will still pick him up as he is a completely standard jungler, about as bog standard as you could hope for with the leap <laughs> and the huge AoE ultimate. But Thor picked up first by Baskin and the boys, proving that they are SPL yep. caliber. <laughs> and proving that you're batting, you're batting a hundred percent so far here, Myth, and that's a perfect way to start off the day. Thor locked in for Baskin and the boys. Jingwei and Terra, though, for Trick Babushkin. I think the Jingwei is an interesting pick, it, and specifically again to kind of bounce off of the SPL meta. You look at kind of a a handful of different hunters that we saw yesterday on her, a big one, Jablanke, still somewhat at the forefront of that conversation. Hu Yi as well, pretty heavily banned out. Jingwei, though. I wouldn't say she fell by the wayside, but wasn't necessarily first pick ban all day yesterday, and Trick Babushka seemed to think differently. Yeah, it seems like the SPL will pick her before that second ban phase rolls around, but today, SEC, we know that they love Jingwei, especially when crit's in meta. Yep. We didn't see too much crit from the SPL yesterday either, so we Good might point. see a shift for that chin size pen build on these hunters. But Jingwei is ever safe. She's going to be able to get out of all sorts of mishaps that might happen, and her passive always going to get her back to lane quickly. Uh, she's just a decent pickup, and if you don't want to show your hand too early, I mean, Jingwei is about as safe as you can go. Absolutely, and I, we're going to have to see some sort of mid lane variety here for Baskin and the boys. Thoth, Scylla both banned out. Raijin already picked up. Kukul Khan off the board as well as Merlin. That leaves Discordia, and that's sort of where my mind was going as well, and Baskin and the boys obviously prioritize her. They do. Discordia, uh, we, we saw the interview with, who was it, Zapman yesterday, who said that yes. you will not be seeing any Discordia in the SPL. SEC staying steadfast to their uh, meta there and locking her in. That's right. This is maybe an uphill battle for Trick Babushka. Baskin and the boys, the, the, the headstrong team at the top of the SEC here in North America. But Trick Babushka, they do have a fighter's chance in this one, and if you have to look at the lanes and, and kind of the matchups across the board, Mifflin, where is the fighter's chance lane-wise? Is, is there one matchup maybe for Trick Babushka that gets you more excited than, than anywhere else? It's got to be just purely out of the jungle. If they hit late game, Bastet is that huge damage output, and we know that Yuji's comfortable on it. But looking across the board, I mean, Achilles can get a lead into King Arthur if he does just pull up ahead just a teensy bit. But Arthur from even should be able to take that fight. Discordia and Raijin are, is kind of a move lane in that both gods are lacking a lot in pressure. Discordia, however, is piloted by Baskin, so we might see Shadow yes. Chair under some duress. <laughs> And if yeah, you take I a peek he... over at that long lane, Jingwei and X-Ball, not too bad. And I, yeah, right. I think you have to give a, a small mid lane buff when it's Baskin. And unfortunately, actually already taken down to half health as Mineral has rotated over to this red buff side. Mast, though, is going to look to get aggressive into the back line. And Shadow Chair has moved himself right on in. Has to burn the beads as well as Baskin has turned around the damage. That's the... The red buff in, they'd maybe gone wrong there for Trick Babushka. They took more damage than I think they bargained for. Suddenly, Shadow Chair may be first on the menu for first blood gear. Meerkat certainly looking in range to close the door. He'll pop the ability and shut down Shadow Chair. That's all Meerkat baby dashing in to clean up that kill. I said he was the weak link, but first blood coming in hot for the boy. And that's going to be rough for Jingwei. X-Fall with a lead. He's going to get that additional power. Poison Darts is going to start getting coming online a little bit earlier. And he's got good chase down potential for Data Remember's escape options. So this could be a pretty detrimental setback for Trick Babushka. Talk about early game presence from Gino. I mean, helping with the assist on that first blood and now forcing Data Remember all the way back underneath that tier one tower. What's the mindset there though from Trick Babushka? I mean, they're invading that red buff and I guess maybe self baited in because Baskin was so low, but they weren't able to find anything, and instead it's Baskin and the boys who have found early aggression. The second kill on the board now as Gino has impacted both. Meerkat has benefited and picked up both. This is a dream start for Baskin and the boys. Yeah, before I open up with some analysis of what's been happening here, I want to openly apologize to Meerkat for anything I might have said to upset him. 2-0 <laughs> is his flashline two minutes into the game. 
It seems like Trick Babushka are trying to really establish themselves early. I know for a fact when I used to play against teams that were considered higher caliber than I was, we would gas pedal the aggression. So looking for an early start, trying to put the enemy team a little bit in an uncomfortable state means right. that it opens up them to, to mistakes. So invading the red buff, I understand mentally why, but if you take a peek at their comp, Raijin at level 2 is not potent. And Mineral's at level 1, and is even further behind now is a killing spree for Meerkat. Springs out three minutes into this game, less so. We've had the same amount of kills as minutes. A rough start for Mineral, two deaths on the board already. Addicts could be taken low here. He's able to dash back beneath his tier 1 tower, so no death under the basket of the boys' solo laner. But three kills for Meerkat, three assists for Gino. Devastating there in the long lane. The red buff invade is starting up. Meerkat starting to back up a little bit, but I don't imagine they're too scared to take this fight, despite Gino being low mana and health. Mineral is still level one. Man, Baskin has a one level lead over Shadow Chair as well, so this is a fight Baskin and the boys will be just fine to take. Red buff dropped down, but it looked like Trick Babushka, thanks to Mineral, were able to lock that one up. But I think you gotta look back now at the Guardian role, right? I mean, Gino's assisted all three. It's only a one level lead over Mineral. But this Terra in the early game has just not gotten anything going and is going to have to find a way to get back in and get involved. Not only has she not gotten anything going, but she went the blink start, which means she doesn't have a defensive relic to get herself back into it. That blink is pure aggression. It's going to be hard to really sit inside a team fight with this level deficit. I imagine we see a return over to the long lane or even just sit in the middle and try to farm up a little bit. But two levels down, not a great look, especially when you're on the more aggressive support. Gino playing on this Ganesha is going to be able to peel out for his back line as well as engage from a distance or drop a silence to get some aura defense. Whereas Terra is all about that unbridled aggression. She's looking for the stun. She's looking to dash in with the root. It's not going to be easy to do that when you're so far behind. In a curious, not really curious, but a 1500 gold lead here, four and a half minutes in. It's so interesting to me. Obviously, you watch through the SPL, and you know you'll have like a ten, a five kill differential, and the gold will somehow still be even, like 15 minutes in. The 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 micro and macro play uh, is just so interesting to watch. And, and Baskin and the boys here, maybe you put them on a similar level. They're able to find a small one kill lead early on, and they've pushed that now to about 1,500 gold. And they keep playing the way they are, Mifflin. This game might just be theirs for the taking. Five minutes in. Yeah, 1,500 gold five minutes in is a lot, but it's not over quite yet. I think it's interesting to point out that Meerkat elected to go Ninja Tabi before finishing that Transcendence. Considering he has three kills, one of which being first blood, I imagine he would have been able to finish up that Trans and get it stacked up early. The Ninja Tabi rush tells me he's looking to start some fights. Oh, Mast is looking to start a fight here on the blue buff side. And up into the air goes Brandon down. He slams to the waiting arms of Mast. So Thor benefiting. For his first kill of the game, Baskin and the boys pick up right where they left off a couple minutes ago to the tune of one more kill. And that's another free kill for them, this time on their own blue buff. Trick Babushka baiting themselves into these bad situations. They're already so far down. They know that Baskin and the boys have this global presence out of Thor. I know that you want to put the aggression onto him, but you can't be moving into the enemy jungle haphazardly. Shadow Chair also losing half of his health to a combo from Baskin. This is not looking too good, but this first objective I imagine is going to happen around the gold theory is going to be very indicative of the course of this game. And you mentioned Shadow Chair, bad to worse for him. I mean, it's maybe a small moment, but another red buff taken away by Baskin and the boys. One on Baskin, one on Gino. And that's always scary, right? I mean, you can even look at the left side of, of the mini-map there. All on the red buff side of Trick Babushka's map is deep ward coverage. So you, you talk about Gold Fury coming up here, and or it's up now, but you talk about a Gold Fury fight maybe starting to form. Baskin and the boys have complete vision coverage of anywhere Trick Babushka look to engage. I mean, that ward coverage is so toxic. It, it, it is perfect if you want to invade into the enemy jungle, which is what Baskin and the boys should be doing. But if at any point Trick Babushka decide to maybe gank Meerkat and they go low, they've got no wards there. Brandon Ball's falling solo to Haddix. Every lane's looking kind of rough right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mifflin, I don't know. I mean, that's now a solo kill for Haddix in the solo lane. I mean, it's the inevitable question, but I'm not used to asking it seven minutes into a game. What is the route for Trick Babushka to get back into this one? You maybe mentioned late game for Big UG on that Bastet. Is that the grain of hope that you're holding on to here? Well, 
Raijin's only gonna get better with time, but we might have to hold that thought as Day is forced to use his ultimate to escape. Mineral and Shadow Chair on the back end of this fight, but Thor now in the air. I suppose if there's a champion to get, or a god to get ganked on, it's a Jing Wei, you can just get out, and that's Dharmic Pillars dropped onto Mineral as Mast is slammed on down. A bit of a closed off fight here, this could be a good one for Trick Babushka, it's a 4 versus 2, and they have found first blood in this game. Big UG up down onto Meerkat, but remember that's a free kill Shivalanke. Suddenly Trick Babushka have found a double kill for Day to remember, and the Jing Wei starting to fire Baskin. On the escape, is able to move himself away from the execute of Brandon Balls. Gino still in the back line, though, is big UG, plenty low, stunned down, but a stun from Mineral will lock down Gino. A three kill swing from Trick Babushka. This one's not all she wrote just yet. Three kill swing, but only 2,000 gold in the lead is now Baskin and the boys. I'm glad I didn't answer the question of what do they need to do to get back into it, as Perfect. it just kind of happens and unfolds in front of our eyes. But it's going to take a little bit more than that for Trick Babushka. They need to get some objectives off the back of these kills to close that gold gap. Right now, this XP lead, the gold lead, is all in favor of Baskin and the boys still. This gold tree remains uncontested. I understand why they don't move in. They're too poked out. Big Yuji was likely under 200 health there. But it's going to take just a little bit more. One more fight like that, though, and we might see this game reach equity again. I got to say, though, Mifway, I mean, that... That still surprises me. We we just seconds before we're talking about the the jungle invade ward coverage that Baskin and the boys had. Why does that fight go so wrong for Baskin and the boys? It seemed like they had all the tools in their belt. Uh, shouts to Mast on Thor. He did unfortunately miss his ult, his hammer, and the majority of his three was only used to clear out those back camps. I understand. I understand why he went for the back camps. He didn't have the burst damage to finish any of the gods, so he wanted to get some of that health and mana back from clearing out those backs. But unfortunately, so far out of position, surrounded by four, especially with Jingwei able to fly back in. I mean, it was uh, a bad situation to be in. And I think the the largest swing from that fight, day to remember, now one level ahead, still one kill behind. But opting for a little bit of crit early on in this Jing Wei build. Mast will take to the skies. Anvil of Dawn looking for a target. And Mineral is who he's identified. Dharmic Pillars will lock in the Terra. And Baskin is able to finish off the kill. But Big Fuji has found a re-engagement over the wall on the Baskin. He goes, who's dashing away now. But Haddix has joined the fight and slams down Big Fuji. Meerkat plugging in some good damage. And suddenly two kills swing through. Make it three for Trick Mabushka. It's a three for two trade. Meerkat will fall the day to remember. And suddenly the Jing Wei firing on all cylinders before Haddix turns it around. It's a four for three swing. Trick Babushka, at least kills wise, come out ahead. That fight was all Haddix for Baskin and the boys. He four speeds, he found the kills, but unfortunately Trick Babushka able to fight into it again. It seems to me that Baskin and the boys understand that they got this early lead and they just want to continue fighting. Yes, they could back up with this gold free and force a fight in a more even setting instead they decide to take the fight on the enemy tower line almost taking the tower as well it's about maybe 10 health left so that's not even a bastion of safety for Trick trick babushka anymore but the gold lead remains constant at 2000 in favor of bad yep. the boys no matter how many kills you get here you're gonna have to get something afterward to close up this gap that's true and i think the the big threat for baskin and the boys against them maybe it's the proper wording is day to remember 3 1 and 3 now on that Jing Wei. Another pick maybe onto Mineral here, and Haddix will shut him down for the fourth kill of the game now on this King Arthur. And on the flip side of the coin, of course, Meerkat had three kills early, has fallen twice since. But, but you look at Haddix and the rotations he's had, he's got himself four kills. Four kills, the tower's already down in Soul Lane. In ranked, we just say that's a one lane once the tower is down. 11 minutes in, it doesn't happen often. Uh, this game so far has looked to me like Baskin and the boys are trying to be as alpha as humanly possible. I mean, right. that pick right there was literally them just walking out of their own spawn trying to find some farm and get sent back in a body bag instantly. Baskin and the boys are looking dominant, but the slash line is 9-7. to seven. It's all about gold right now. As Meerkat moves in towards that gold free, takes away the ward, we might see a fight erupt around an actual objective. And the last time we fought on the left-hand side of this jungle, Baskin and the boys were not the beneficiaries of a winning fight, and it's somewhat kept this game closer than it looked five minutes into it. And you bring up gold, Gold Fury will be that next objective. It is a, a Rage picked up, second completed item overall, though, for Day to Remember, who's now under duress by Meerkat, who's found the slam down. A brilliant wall will lock down Day to Remember, but 
pop that airstrike to get out to safety. It's half health. Jingwei is going to have to return to base. Trick Babushka do have ward coverage over this Gold Fury. But do they have contest range? No, they don't. Gina will drop down the Dharmic Pillars just to buy some damage and maybe some disengage for Baskin and the boys. But suddenly Baskin is locked down. Big wow. Yuji up down into the middle laner. Big Yuji, though, is low. And Haddox now rampaging through the Trick Babushka lineup. But Brandon Balls execute shuts him down as soon as he starts rampaging. Mineral is still low, a two-sided fight as Maskin will try to dive into the back line. Meerkat has found the final shot on the Shadow Chair. Three versus three, at least numbers-wise, as far as the map goes. Data, remember, plenty strong. No stacks on the Rage just yet. The chase is on here, Mifflin. We saw a fantastic wall from Mineral there to peel himself out, stop that Berserker's Barrage as soon as it started. I mean, Trick Babushka did, unfortunately, get the back end of that fight, and Gino staying a little bit too long. It's picked out trying to defend his own purple buff. After a gold for you like that, I would have liked to see a disengage, but when Mask finds a two-man double hammer to drop two targets to less than one-tenth HP, I understand where maybe a little bit of that greed comes into play. But after Baskin falls, that was Trick Babushka's fight to take. It, it, unfortunate yep. that it wasn't able to go as cleanly as they had hoped. Two kills for Baskin and the boys, but take a peek at that gold lead. Now it's 3,000. And I think that's a big fight for, for Brandon Balls. Found a good execute onto Haddox, who was rampaging up to that point. So first death in this game for Haddox on that King Arthur. I think those types of fights, though, Mifflin, are, are somewhat hard to kind of look at on, on a large scale and then say who's the big winner. Kind of run through a couple members of Baskin and the boys as Meerkat, despite a two-level deficit, still feels confident. I mean, you look at the, the large picture. It's a Gold Fury and, and some kills back and forth. Who's the big winner there? I would have to give it to Baskin and the boys. They lost one more teammate than they got a kill for, but they do get that objective. And now they're looking at Pyromancer as Meerkat sees some aggression into that long lane. I think he's just going to get forced out here, and Pyro should go for free. Darkest of Nights used by Meerkat, but Mass is able to get a kill, so map-wide, you get a one-for-one -one trade, but Baskin and the boys snag Pyromancer as well, so three and some change, thousand gold lead, and a one more kill of, I guess, advantage now for both sides. Mast will move himself in on a Shadow Chair who has the escape to get away. But it seems like Baskin and the boys have been okay with doing that. Get, uh, get a respawning objective and then maybe lose a fight, go even at, at worst. I mean, it doesn't seem to me like they're willing to lose any fight anywhere. They're fighting right. tooth and nail. However, they're just coming ahead on the playing the map just ever so much better. Baskin rotating in, finds the pick on Mineral on the back line. I mean, this support is level 10. They're equity with the enemy Ganesh. Who, nope, I take that back. Gino just hit level 11. But those stacks on the Thieves need to come online sooner than later. The tankiness hasn't been developed by either Guardian as of yet, but it, that ritual dagger coming out from Gino is going to play in so much more considering yep. Terra is moving in towards a more bruiser item in this helmet. And she can't play aggressive when you're that far down. I mean, if a level 15 Discordia is walking me down, I'm going to want some sort of magic defense. And I like the way you bring that up. I mean, Relic Dagger picked up for Gino before he's le hit level 12. And he's got the Heavenly Wings as his first active. Uh, where does Gino maybe find that opening to, to start pop in that sprint here in some of these fights, especially with the Relic Dagger. I mean, he'll feel more comfortable using it maybe on cooldown. Yeah, the, as the fights have been unfolding, the second a 5v5 starts, it looks to me like neither team is willing to give up any ground. So I imagine the absolute second that Gino uses his own ultimate to slow down the enemies, he's going to pop his Heavenly, and they're going to spearhead straight into the comp, try and find a dive on a Shadow Chair or maybe even Data Amoeber. But, I mean, when you do have that Relic Dagger, yes, using it on cooldown is a little bit more appetizing, and I imagine Gino, no stranger to aggression, is going to do as you said. No, it just makes sense, right? I mean, from what we've seen of Baskin and the boys, I mean, they have not let off the gas just yet, and already can see trying to take control of this backside jungle, and Fury respawning in 45 seconds. That's probably the ire of their eyes. Gino has maybe found an opening, and Mast is dug down. Mineral taken low. Baskin is going to finish off the kill. Data remember, back pedals away underneath his tier 2 tower. Stunned down, two tap by Mask. We'll just chunk away about two-thirds of that health. Not enough for the kill onto the Trick Babushka Hunter, but it's a one kill advantage and Fury up in 20 seconds. Dave, take a peek at Big Yuji's actives there. Bracer 
gonna be picked up. That's strange to me, especially Whoa. considering how core anti heal is in conquest. I mean, we're gonna see Brawler's beat sticks come out. We've already got a divine ruin on that Discordia. The the returns from that heal aren't gonna be very good, and it's only gonna get worse as time goes on. I have to imagine Aegis would have been a, a smarter pickup. Yeah, that's his uh Second active there, so I mean, maybe we'll have to do a late game check in, see how the, the bracers are working for him. Has the beads alternatively, so we'll avoid some of that lockdown from Baskin and the boys. But now that we're starting to pivot ourselves kind of around this fury, that seems to be where this next fight will begin. And it's going to get started up here by Trick Babushka, as Haddix is already in the fray. It's a five versus five fight. Both teams fully strong. Both mitts down, though, for either side. Big Huji into the back line, but. Nothing to be found there except death as Attic puts him in the dirt. Still playing frontline duties is this King Arthur. Four members of Trick Babushka. They're gonna back themselves off back beneath uh, the, this backside jungle. Uh, harpies and Haddock, so look at look at how much respect Trick Babushka are, are paying to this King Arthur. Six, one, and three. Four members of Trick Babushka. They don't even want to face him. You call it respect, I'm gonna call it fear. Chaddix is striking fear into the hearts of his enemies. At no point is anyone on Trick Babushka, barring Yuji, able to do lethal amounts of damage to this Arthur. So the second that Bastet fell, I mean, I would have been backing up completely and maybe look for some objectives on the other side of the map. Maybe leave and try and clear out some back camps, some blue buff or speed or something like that. Instead, it seems like Haddix is gonna get free reign of those backs and now aggressing on the Brandon. I mean, this is some alpha play we're seeing out of Chaddix, who truly earned yep. his name. And I was curious as to how that fight sort of started off. I mean, Big Huji, I guess, saw some sort of opening in the back line, but leapt in and immediately got deleted. I mean, could you identify, like, a, like a thought process there? Was he maybe, did he maybe spy an opening on, on Meerkat or Baskin or one of the squishies? So, I'm gonna do a deep dive into Big Huji's brain yeah. here. Uh, fun fact for the chat, I do have ESP. He was thinking, and I quote, me Bastet, me big brain, me big damage, I go in. And then when he died, he said, oh, no, this sucks. Right, well, I'm Bastet, and when I get a kill, I think yes, and when I die, I think to myself, no, or whatever that meme is. And Big Yuji's thinking no at least four times this game, and thinking yes, only three or so times. But a 20-minute gold check-in, I mean, we, we hung on, if you're Bastet and the boys, to about a 2,000 gold lead for the first 10, 15 minutes of this match. But this one's kind of been blown wide open. The last few Furies, both going the way of Baskin and the Boys, a Pyromancer, 4,500 gold lead Mifflin, 3,000 on the experience charts as well. There was some tumultuous play there in the mid game, but Baskin and the Boys, I think, have wrangled control right back. I mean, they have had control nearly the entire time. However, Trick Babushka only being 5,000 gold down, that's not a complete death sentence. Is it concerning? Yes. Is it getting worse now that Pyromancer has fallen uncontested? Yes. Is Fire Giant being grouped up on by five members of Baskin and the boys while your Bass sets on the other side of the map? Yes. But I think that Trick Babushka can absolutely get back into it. If you take a peek at their comp, if Terra hits level 20, once Big Yuji's level 20, once Shadow Chair is level 20, these are all high damage output gods. Unfortunately, it just doesn't seem like they're going to be allowed to get the late game as Big Yuji gets aggression. Mast just short on the Anvil of Dawn, but not short on the two tap and bottle of Big Yuji dancing around. And it's going to take a while for you to hit level 20 when you're spending 45 or so seconds back in base respawning. I mean, yeah, if Mineral gets to level 20, that's a big opening, but you're level 12, 21 minutes into this game. I mean, this one's got to go another 10, 15 minutes, right? for for Mineral to maybe hit that point where he's feeling comfortable. And I, I'm just, I'm worried now if I'm Trick Babushka. It's not like there's one specific member of Baskin and the Boys that's really fed. I mean, you look at Haddix, Baskin's doing good damage, Meerkat as well. They're all, they're all something to be feared here as Fire Giant is started up by Baskin and the Boys, taking low to about 50% health. Brandon falls in range. Trick Babushka nice taking steal. away. Brandon falls, moves in, and shuts down Mast as well. That's one way to get yourself back into this game, but the fight still could be going the way of Baskin and the boys. Execute no good for Brandon Balls. Meerkat still plugging away to good pot shots, and Brandon Balls will finally fall. The steal is in. Three members strong, and Data, remember, he's pushed down this left side Phoenix this entire time. What a play for Trick Babushka. Yes, talk about a swing. Three 
team members now have Fire Giant on Trick Babushka. Phoenix is down. There's still three neutral towers available to be taken. I imagine we'll see them group up and start to push down mid. They could back up to Gold Fury afterward to swing that Oni Fury. The gold deficit is eliminated. All the memes earlier can be completely washed away as this game reaches complete equity at the 22 minute mark. Yeah, it's, it's perfect how I say they've got a huge uphill climb for Trick Babushka to get back into this game and then that happens. Nifun, I feel like we've seen so many FG steals, a bunch of uh, uh, Fury steals here in, in this season of, of Smite. You look at the Trick Babushka roster though, I mean, if you're basking in the boys maybe, let me, let me flip the coin. What do you do differently there to try to prevent that? I mean, is it better to maybe pull off the FG, just get rid of Brandon, anyone from Trick Babushka that's in range, or do you agree with them just trying to burn it faster? I would have personally made the call to switch it to a fight mode and maybe reset this objective. There were three members of Trick Babushka in range to hit that fire giant, and they were basking in the boys the entire time were just trying to burst it down. I understand once you pop that frenzy that you want to continue to focus down that objective, but that frenzy is equally as potent when you're just fighting enemy gods. So right. I think that is a bit of a misplay from Baskin and the boys, but they still have this 600, 700 gold lead. It's not looking too absolutely terrible. There's only three members with Trick Babushka with Fire Giant. If they would have pulled off of Shadow Chair Day, that's the majority of their fight potential off. But you have to keep your eyes on Big Yuji now. He's got the Heart Seeker online. There's so much pen online on this Basset as well. Level 17, he's at a level, uh, no level deficit for mass there. It's going to be very easy here for him to find that damage. No chance for Baskin and the boys to move in and steal that one away. And even maybe a fight brewing here for Trick Babushka as Haddox is forced to use some of the dashes to get away. Fire minions soon to crash on this left hand side. Baskin and the boys now really have to be smart and I think consider where they take these fights. There's two tier two towers remaining. Fire Giant buff still on Shadow Chair, Mineral and Data Remember. Maybe you poke out some damage, Myth, but you gotta be cautious underneath these tier two towers, really looking for a fight. Yeah, defending under tier two is always dangerous, but Basket of the Boys willing to continue. And they're gonna try, and that's Darkest of Nights used early on here. Mast has found a leap down in the back line of Trick Babushka, and a split fight there is Mineral around the corner. That's the seventh time this game that Terra has fallen. There you go, Basket of the Boys, they found a small opening, and. Maybe found a good defense that works for them, but as soon as the next fire, or the only wave maybe crashing here in the mid lane, Trip Bushka are gonna stick themselves around. Haddock's ultimate onto Big UG, but taken low as Big UG deletes the King Arthur. Meerkat rejoins the fight to the tune of one kill. Four versus three, still here in the mid lane. Shadow Chair has the disengage. Brandon Balls just a touch slower. Fire minions pushing in that left hand side, so Baskin and the boys have to be careful and think smart about how far they chase. They do. They have to be worried about these minions, especially moving to their base, as you said. The only free wave is so strong, but Day now finds Baskin alone, finds these autos, can't quite find enough, gets his beads force, but picks up the kill. Wow, that's devastating for Baskin and the boys, and Mast was there to try to peel for his mid laner, but instead they both end up falling the rotation through from Trick Babushka. That is 45 seconds on two members of Baskin and the boys, Mifflin. Things are looking dire all of a sudden for the blue side. They have to be worried about this Phoenix as it spawns, so if Trick Babushka decide to push down this middle Phoenix immediately, that left side Phoenix is gonna have fire minion waves flooding in as it spawns. They're gonna have to split up their defense, Baskin and the boys. It might not be very easy to keep all your Phoenixes alive. You have to choose one. Well, the fight is on, and that's another Darkest of Night used by Meerkat Day to remember. Wiped off the map. Map by the back line for Baskin and the boys, but Meerkat is taken low as Brandon Balls has found a good engagement. A bit of a split fight here. Haddox identifying Shadow Chair, going hard on him. Instead, it's Gino left alone in the back line with a couple members of Trick Babushka. Haddox, though, might find the eighth kill of the game onto Mineral and eighth kill of the game for himself. But instead, it's a good disengage. Big UG, though, is still in range. Nice. Haddox wants some more. A double kill from Mass as he slams down. Trick Babushka, you're the ones that have overstayed, but it's an execute from Brandon Balls to pull it back. A double kill for Brandon Balls, a double kill for Mast, but it's the Achilles who's the last one alive. You know, with so many people dying in a fight, it's usually hard to call out who won it, but Baskin and the boys immediately get their left side Phoenix back up, the mid Phoenix is back up. So many people dead on the side of Trick Babushka means that Baskin and the boys can move up towards that Fire Giant and get some ward dominance. I have to say they came out ahead. 
but take a peek at that gold lead for the first time. Trick Babushka now with the dominating yeah. lead, 2,000 in favor of them. It's really going to come down to this next Fire Giant play. If Baskin and the boys get it, they could likely win off of it. If Trick Babushka get it, they could likely win off of it. This Fire Giant is going to be huge for the course of this game. And especially 27 minutes in when these death timers are as, as heavy as they are. But I feel like we've seen a lot, Miff, when Pyromancer are locked down by Trick Babushka. We might see more of an elongated dance here, but Gino has found a roundabout route. Back behind Day to remember, Brandon Balls is there, Mineral in on the collapse as well. Gino having to use the dash, Darmic Pillars drop just to buy some damage, but Trick Babushka, they might be able to collapse on this one. Shadow Chair maybe having to use the dash forward, he does. That is 50 seconds now on the respawn for Gino. Yeah, Gino trying to get behind the enemy team there, maybe open up some aggression so the Baskin of the boys you know, the boys can move in with them, but unfortunately, Trick Babushka spawns just in time to get there and get the sandwich on Gino instead, turning it on him. Now Fire Giant, five versus four in favor of Trick Babushka, as well as the gold deficit in favor of them as well. This pool is a little bit risky. Is pulled, though, by Trick Babushka, and maybe sensing that same risk, Trick Babushka will back themselves off. Have to be mindful, though. It's a four versus four numbers-wise, but that's because Big Yuji pushing down that left-hand side, Phoenix, Still quite low, but Haddocks will be sent back by Baskin and the boys to play defense. Fire Giant looked at and started up here by Trick Babushka, so the dance continues, but this time it's only three members of Baskin and the boys left in range. Brandon Balls playing front line to just try to lock off a couple members of Baskin and the boys. FG down to half health. Meerkat pops the darkest of nights. Brandon Balls finds the stun. Haddocks rejoins the fray. Mask evaporated by Shadow Chair. Suddenly Thor no longer here. Baskin taken down. It's a double kill from the Raijin. Big UG snags one as well. That is one minute effectively on the death timer for three members of Baskin and the boys. And four members still alive for Trick Babushka, and they're all relatively healthy. They can continue the aggression. I imagine we see them pick up this Tier 2 tower, then back up to Fire Giant, where they might even elect to continue pushing down the Phoenix. I would agree with the Fire Giant call. It's especially safe, considering you know that Haddix no longer has his teleport available. So if they back up there, Haddix will have to walk in in a more standard path. Instead, it looks like they're going to elect for this Phoenix. And Haddix, level 20 King Arthur, behind your entire team. No ultimates truly available outside of Jing Wei's. It's going to be hard to see Jin, even despite this numbers deficit. You've got all of your carries and no support for Trick Babushka, and only your support and no carries, save maybe King Arthur for Baskin and the boys. Haddock's playing this one patiently. Right side Phoenix taken down, and minions pouring into the base, but maybe not a bad idea there for Baskin and the boys just to slow this one down. So Fire Giant's still up. Haddock's has finally found his opening on a Shadow Chair who has to burn the Aegis, and Haddock's will take that as victory enough as Mast is going to actually find nice. the kill and finds the shot on the Shadow Chair. A minute now on the Trick Babushka mid laner as Big Yuji will pounce on back, but Attic still awaiting his return as Big Yuji does slam down Brandon Balls. The ire of four members' eyes. Titan under attack, but just by some minions, so nothing to be super mindful of there just yet. Baskin will send out the apple and plug away some good damage. It's a one-for-none trade here for Baskin and the boys. Low health bars for Trick Babushka. Could be a fire giant here, Miff. One for none, Fire Giant available, I imagine it will be. And that is an involved Fire Giant now. Frenzy is popped, it's burning quickly. Mineral and Yuji, the only ones in range, but Yuji's so low. Can they do it again? Trick Babushka move themselves within range. Mineral's gonna have to dash out. Big Yuji back over the wall on the opposite side. Baskin and the boys lock down the FG. And maybe a kill onto Mineral here as well, who has stunned out Gino. Maybe we'll look for a leap in, but one more time though, Trick Babushka have done this time and time again. They split this map, they're looking for this left side Phoenix. They will get the left side Phoenix, so opposite lane Phoenix is down, but it is the Fire Giant, five members strong for the of the boys. Having those two Phoenixes down is going to be so hard to get any sort of aggression rolling for Bass and the boys, especially considering on the right side of the map, that wave is so pushed up. Watch out, Mass has found the dunk down onto Brandon Balls. This may be a good fight for Baskin and the boys. The ultimate has to be used, but caught out by the stun through the Dharmic Pillars for the slow silence down, and that's a dead Achilles. 60 seconds on that death timer. Meerkat will solo this Primal Fury. Still five members with Fire Giant, and you've got a man advantage. You do have that man advantage. I imagine we see maybe a four-man push on that left side of the map as Baskin continues to push up the right. 
Maybe they'll meet up in the middle lane afterward after that tier two and that duo side of the map does fall. But right now with these Phoenixes down, I mean, it's gonna be difficult. There's two lanes that you have to keep your eyes on at all times and they're not even two lanes next to each other. So if Trick Babushi decide to maybe gank one lane that's straight up, it's gonna be a very split fight for Baskin and the boys. And Trick Babushka at this point, everyone's just about level 20. Barring that Terra, and we said that once she gets there, that's that ticking time bomb telling you that Trick Babusha's comp is come fully to fruition. So far, we've seen Big Yuji use that Bracer thrice, and it hasn't got him any value outside of maybe getting a little bit of CD back, but right. as of yet, it hasn't been quite enough. I imagine he is kicking himself ever so slightly for that pickup, or maybe not. This game's been going a lot better than I think anyone really would have expected. Nifwin, I think these are still tense moments, though, for Baskin and the boys, who have two minutes, ten seconds on those Fire Giant buffs. I mean, what's the real play here with Fire Giant? Is that really just a delay tool to try to help those Phoenixes respawn? I think I'm definitely looking to push out at least some Tier 2 towers with this Fire Giant. Maybe you don't feel very confident moving in towards this Phoenix. I like what they're doing here. They sent our boy Chaddix, as I am going to deem him now, <laughs> to the Soul Lane. He could TP over at any moment's yep. notice. And it looks like that might be what he's doing. Well, the moment is here, and Haddix has found the TP into the back line. Pops the ultimate onto Big UG. This could be the fight of the game, but Haddix is too low to really participate. And Baskin, low as well, will toss out the ultimate, connect for just a little bit of damage. Mass finds a nice stun. This is a great fight for Trick Babushka if they can convert any of these kills, but so much mobility from Baskin and the boys allows them to disengage. Meerkat burning the beads, so five members somehow still left alive for Baskin and the boys. Five members left alive for Trick Babushka. All fireworks, no kills, and we still stand even. Eight ultimates down. The only ones still available are Jingwei and King Arthur. But that right side Phoenix did just spawn for Baskin and the boys. It is yep. incredibly unhealthy if Trick Babushka decide to maybe see some aggression here. They might be able to take it up, but I don't imagine they will as there are still five fire giants strong inside of Baskin and the boys. That fire minion wave on the right side of the map is going to be a huge concern now, especially considering there's fire many ways flooding on the left as well. But it is pushed up just enough, and it seems like Mass is going to go ahead and pick it up very easily. And Baskin and the boys, they, they did look for an opening there, as you figured they might. But I think as, as well as looking for those small openings and small advantages, they've done a great job of kind of delaying this one out, which in my opinion maybe seems weird for a fire giant, but with two... With two Phoenixes down, maybe you look for a fight that works for you, but but ultimately you've, as you point out, given that right side Phoenix time to respawn, the left side Phoenix is very shortly coming up here as well, and maybe even found some good damage and, and some ward control here by the Fire Giant. Yeah, they certainly use that Fire Giant well to reach themselves back to a state of uh, calm. However, right. Fire Giant does respawn in exactly one minute, and it seems like every time a full five-on-five five fight has started, especially after this 30-minute mark, Trick Babushka have been getting the better end of it. Haddix isn't nearly as tanky as he used to be. Gino hasn't been able to find any good engagements. I mean, look at this. Haddix has to dash away, does stay alive. Gino is there to save the day, and Baskin is there to make day to remember. Forget this one. It's a couple ultimates used, really only the Dharmic Pillars. A minute left on the respawn for the Trick Babushka Hunter. A one-man advantage for Baskin and the boys, but effectively even as Haddix is forced to go back to base. Haddix is forced to go back, but Mass taking a play from Trick Babushka's book. He's going to look for some split push himself. Instead, electing the back, I imagine he is worried about this Fire Giant spawning momentarily. But this is a 5v4 in favor of Baskin and the boys. Even though Trick Babushka do have that superior positioning around the fire, it's not going to be easy to hold it, especially if Big Yuji returns to base. That's right, and it's Day to Remember as well that's missing, and, and Day has been massive in these last few fights for Trick Babushka, and a fight will begin with Gino moving through, finds some silence. Haddix blinks in to the front line of Trick Babushka. The respect is paid, and actually ultimate's burned on this fire giant. Let's burn down this EFG as fast as we can, and it works out this time for Baskin and the boys. Four seconds still on day to remember. Trick Babushka, you're being collapsed upon. Mass has found a double stun. Mineral taken low. That's another one minute death timer as Trick Babushka still at a disadvantage. Health bar still low though for Baskin and the boys. You have to get out alive to make this one worthwhile. Brandon Vault stunned down, plugged for some good damage by Baskin, but incoming from behind still are Trick Babushka. Two members down, five members strong for Baskin and the boys, and that's the fight they like to take. Aegis forced out on the tail end there by Rajan onto Meerkat, so if Big Yuji can find those paws, it's a ton of damage. Ooh, 
Big Yuji, though, stunned down and now silenced by just enough time. And Karmic Pillars back up again. The cooldown on that so effective. Big Yuji burns the leap and Mast is there to take advantage. Two members left alive of Trick Babushka. Five members with Enhanced Fire Giant for Baskin and the boys in this right hand lane. It's looking like the target. Now that all of their Phoenixes are back alive, they can immediately move into some unbridled aggression. They don't have to be worried about their own base at this point. However, three tier two towers still available, three Phoenixes. It's not going to be the most easy way to end if they do elect to move in with Big Yuji still dead for 40 seconds. But they should certainly be able to pick up one, maybe two Phoenixes here. And it's the right side Phoenix that's maybe looking more frequent. And this is absolutely game ending territory if you lose a fight. Beneath your Phoenix, Phoenix taken down, Mineral taken low. Gino wow. dashes in and finds the stun, and the Dharmic Pillars get some great damage. This might just be the game-ending fight for Baskin and the boys as Mastis is slammed down. Mastis finds the kill. Brandon Balls does shut down the Thor, so a small win there for Trick Babushka. Three members back on respawn, but you lose your Thor. Baskin and the boys are going to take that as a sign of caution and back themselves up. Meerkat has been an absolute chainsaw in these fights, topping up the player damage chart. I mean, he's absolutely the threat on the side of Baskin and the boys right now. It's oh, yeah. not often you get to gas up someone that isn't the titular Baskin, but right now Meerkat proving that despite everything I said in P's and B's or even leading up to this match, uh, I am the fool and he's playing incredibly comfortably in this Hunter role. And he's top damage in this game and maybe another small win for Trick Babushka is the Oni Fury. Whoa, we'll just delay some of those pushes and extend it just a moment longer than Trick Babushka anticipated. But it's Fury number two for Trick Babushka. Realistically, though, Mifflin, what, what does that buy for Trick Babushka here? Exactly however long it takes Baskin and the boys to clear out one wave of minions in each lane. That gold is not going to come into play too hard here. But that only minion wave might slow down Baskin and the boys for. Uh, Educated gas 15 seconds. Fair enough. And sometimes that's what you need, right? I mean, maybe there's a, a respawn that you just need a little bit longer. Okay, never mind. Uh, a, a, slight, uh, a slight overstatement there is the only way you've deleted in about half a second. Baskin and the boys still have four enhanced fire giant buffs. Mass the only one without, and five members strong for both sides. Realizing that right side Phoenix is down, Baskin and the boys are going to move themselves to the left side tier two tower. That one's taken low, and it could be another Phoenix fight here for Baskin and the boys. Two members backing on the side of Trick Babushka to get ready for this defense. Mass so far away. This is a four versus five on the Phoenix, and it's burning fast. Gino has found a small engagement. Haddock playing tank underneath that Phoenix just a little bit. Mast in on the rotation, standing in the mid lane, has the Anvil of Dawn. But now no Dharmic Pillars, no Darkest of Nights for Meerkat. Still five ultimates available for Trick Babushka. Could be the advantage that Trick Babushka needs to try to win a fight beneath one of their Phoenixes. Mast takes to the sky, looking for a slam down, and he's nice. found three. Big stun by Mast, and Baskin and the boys will finally finish off that left side Phoenix. Execute no good onto Haddix, but Shadow Chair, he's turned around the damage. Meerkat is down as well. Big Yuji locked down by Baskin. That's a brilliant start to a fight for Baskin and the boys, but it all goes wrong. Tearjerker, when your jungler plays so well there, the team still falls to the enemies. But now five members strong are Trick Babushka, two dead for the next 50 seconds. For Baskin and the boys, they could return a Phoenix here. They might even look for the end if they can get a pick onto Baskin. It's going to be very easy to dive in onto this Discordia now that there's no Chainsaw and Meerkat to deal damage in the back line. No Frontliner out of this Chaddix. Baskin's got to be playing incredibly safe here. Yep. Luckily, he still does have all of his actors available, as does Mast. But no act is available right now from Ganesh. This defense is going to be hard fought. There's only 10 seconds left on the Fire Giant respawn as well, so nothing to take there for Trick Babushka. And it only takes him about 10 or so seconds to finish off the FG, so Haddix and Meerkat still 10 seconds left on respawn. Fire Giant just now slamming down to the right side of the map for what could be the fourth secured FG. Remember, one stolen away. That was really the, the ticket back into this game for Trick Babushka was the first Fire Giant of the game stolen away. All looked like it was over 20 minutes ago, but we were proven wrong.
I don't like that call from Trick Babushka. If you want to go ahead and siege that Phoenix, you have to give up that other Phoenix on the solo side of the map. Instead, they send Achilles over there, and then they stall out their own push at that Phoenix line, meaning that, truthfully, all they got was the defense of their own Phoenix. If they had maybe elected to move towards Fire Giant, they could have done both. That's closer to the solo side of the map. Instead, they only get that Phoenix back up, and now Baskin of the Boys, five strong, get the better position around this Fire Giant as well. Five ultimates strong. Every player in the game, except for Big Yuji, has all of their actives available. This is a full strength fight, truly, for both teams, and all it dead even across the board. Pyro Man just for one more objectives now for Baskin and the boys. Both teams completely aware of where one another is. Haddix has been playing engaged pretty heavily. Gino has as well, and maybe the engagement still comes through this Ganesh. Did you see that damage that Gino took from just one auto yep. from Day? I mean, that's got to be pretty indicative to Trick Babushka that, hey guys, that's their tank and I am chunking. I'm swinging two autos a second and each one's doing about a tenth of his health. If we get any form of CC, it doesn't matter who it is, we can burn them. That's huge information for Trick Babushka, but this defensive positioning around the Fire Giant is so hard to find your way into. Because the same can be said of Baskin and the boys. Any form of CC they find is going to be able to burn away just about anyone on the side of Trick Babushka. And I wonder if Baskin and the boys may be feeling a little bit more cautious now. Mast a three-man dunk underneath the left side Phoenix, and you still somehow lose that fight. So I think Baskin and the boys may be now just looking for a, a perfect engagement. And I'm not sure who that comes in the form of, but Data Remember is backed off. This is the opening that Baskin and the boys have looked for. Data Remember clearing out that left side lane. Down comes Slamming Mast, deleted his big UG. No more Mast death. Fire Giant taken low and taken down by Baskin and the boys. It's a one kill swing. It's a Fire Giant swing as well. Right side Phoenix up. And Baskin and the boys have found themselves an opening. The literal second that Baskin and the boys saw Jing Wei show up on that left side of the map, Mass slammed his four key, slammed it down. Girdle, or Frenzy rather, was popped by not Gino. Fire Giant was started up. The second Babushka let open, or left open an opening, Baskin of the Boys take it instantly. The opening's still there for 35 seconds of a one man advantage, and it's the mid lane tier two tower that is looking like a target for Baskin of the Boys. Left side Phoenix respawns, still very low, but instead it's going to be the mid lane Phoenix that Baskin of the Boys move in towards. Finally, could be a game-ending fight here. Baskin and the boys are able to pick off Mineral. It is taken down to about half health, but don't find the kill just yet. And this is methodical, Mifflin. They're going to take right side Phoenix, take mid lane Phoenix, and let's go over to the left as well. It would be a historic comeback. Not often do people come back from three Phoenixes down as they trick Babushka is now put in that situation. I agree with the call to play it a little bit slower there. They knew that Big Gucci's respawn timer was very low, so had they seen some aggression towards that Titan, I mean, Bastet would have been there just about instantly with the ability to jump in. Now backing up to pick up that gold tree. I mean, they've got as much time as they want to to work with. That Fire Giant has plenty of time left on it. Three Phoenixes down for the longest. I mean, they can do literally anything they want. I imagine you see Bastet and the boys spend some of this gold, maybe get some elixirs online, and then push up all of the lanes to get these Fire Minions flooding in. But it's Red Elixir. Just noticed quickly there for Baskin, used up. So the Discordia is going to be hitting plenty hard there. Top player damage in the game over to Meerkat. And, you know, maybe that's, it's good that I think he was able to make good. You think two minutes into this game, three minutes in, he had three kills. He's kept up that pace despite a tumultuous mid game. We only saw it for a second, but if my eyes do not betray me, Baskin is sitting on 1,026 magical power right now. I don't want to be on the receiving end of just about anything Baskin can do. Yeah, no thanks. No thanks, and especially when it's Baskin, he's going to be hitting just hard enough, and I think this is a good moment for Baskin and the boys. Left side lane pushing in, right side wave pushing in as well. Mid lane wave has reached its destination. So the fight will commence maybe just outside of the Phoenix if Trick Babushka or Baskin and the boys have it their way, or just on top. But sometimes teams will look for the end and not even concern themselves with the fight. You can delete this Titan pretty quickly. If you're Baskin and the boys, still five members with Enhanced Fire Giant. One minute left on that buff. Waves crashing in here, Mifflin. The fight might just break out. Yeah, the respect that Trick Babushka is showing by not moving up is a little bit concerning. But instead, the engagement starts. 
And here we go, and it's Shadow Chair who's the first one to go down. Baskin has found a disengage, but Brandon Balls has found the execute. Meerkat saved by Mast as Data Remember taken low. A double kill on the execute from Brandon Balls, but it's only two members left alive here from Trick Mabushka, and it might be one here in just a second. Titan is under attack. Baskin and the boys will turn their attention to the big T, and they will take game number one. I mean, I understand, Trick Babushka, they have to engage outside of their Titan simply because the residual AoE damage of these absolute beasts on both teams. I mean, that's about an hour-long game. The damage just would have been enough to shut down that Titan had they not even aimed at it. So that engagement was the right play, but unfortunately, it doesn't pan out in favor of them. Oh, Addix 10, 4, and 19. 11, 7, and 15 from Mast as well. I loved what I mean. We, we, so much of a spotlight on Haddocks for good reason. Meerkat as well. I think Gino had a brilliant early game, found some good engagements into the late game. But I think you look at Mast. He found so many great engagements there for Baskin and the boys. Some made good on. Some, you know, turned around in, in favor of Trick Babushka. But I think this Thor pick certainly did its work. It did, but we can't forget about Meerkat dropping 37 thousand damage casual. on a role that he hasn't been playing for too long either that that is as casual as it gets he was having a great time at one point in that game he was three levels down didn't stop him from taking fights at the enemy tower anyway i mean meerkat's looking good look at this early game though mifflin we're watching these replays five and a half minutes in it is 4-0 three of them are on meerkat mast slams down for a double i mean 26 minutes in seems like forever ago what extends this game as long as it was? It was the poor plays from Baskin and the boys showing just not any respect at all, taking some inadvisable fights in the enemy jungle or around the enemy towers. Yes, they did usually come out ahead on those fights, except for the ones where they didn't, but you're not able to do any objectives off the back end of it, right. so just letting Trick Babushka extend that game just a little bit, even though maybe you are still coming out 100 gold up here, 200 gold up there, that's still all experience that is going towards Trick Babushka, and then we can't forget about that Fire Giant Steel. That's right, the Fire Giant Steel, I think a big one that allowed Trick Babushka to have some sort of handhold in game number one. This one's a barn burner, but Baskin and the boys cling on. And they take the win here in game number one. These are best of three sets, which means we've at least got one more from you. We'll have game two right after this. That was pushing an hour long, but it's Baskin and the boys that come out on top. And hey, you're, you're sitting here, you're watching Smite. Hopefully your account is linked to the live, live stream and esports tab in Smite game. And you're garnering up those viewer points because if you do, you're well on your way to unlocking Dunk Father Odin, one of the best skins in that store by far. And you earn points for doing just what you're doing now. You get to dive in, take a look at uh, Dunk Father Odin, and spend some of those viewer points. Uh, Mifflin is still here with me, though, to talk game number one and, and move into game number two. All right, Mif, we've, we've had a second to, to take a deep breath after game number one. And, and as we look towards picks and bans maybe for game number two, is there Are there changes maybe in mentality or draft style you think that one team or the other needs to make? I think Trick Babushka might try to look towards a little bit of more of an early game focus on their teams. I feel like I say it all the time, but when you're losing early as well, hard right. as you did last game, you got to make a, a little bit of an adjustment. We might even see the Thor ban come out as well. A lot of the early aggression was off the basket, or back of Masked finding these huge dunks. But overall, I mean, Trick Babushka can't be too upset with that how that game went. They drafted for the late, and they somehow made their way there. You can't rely on a Fire right. Giant Steal every time, though. Right. For, for the first 20 minutes of the game, and, and especially when things look dire, you sort of were, were mentioning that the, the one kernel of hope is that they somehow make it to late game. And I'm like, there's no way. That's 20 minutes from now. And then 30 minutes from then, we made it to late game. And it's just better execution from Baskin to the boys that pushed them over the finish line in game number one. Thor and Jablanke banned out by Trick Babushka here, and I don't think I can fault them for that, Mifflin. I mean, when Meerkat's showing that he's so comfortable on that god, when Mass is showing that he's doing so well as well, taking those bans is nice, but what are you leaving open in exchange? Jingwei's given up, now Baskin and the boys taking away that from Day. But Merlin and Naja return to the other side. That's a lot of damage and some early game in that Naja. So, so far, I'm a huge fan of Trick's draft. I am curious, and, and we're obviously going to have to see the next three picks roll through for Trick Babushka. But the Naja, I think, has been so interesting to watch. And 
I feel like I've seen it more in a, a guardian kind of double assassin composition role than maybe I have in, in the jungle. Yeah, normally we will also see Naja in support, as you said. He's also very comfortable in solo, and that's partially the strength of Naja is that he is comfortable in so many roles that it is a flex pick. So maybe now if they decide not to pick up a support or a solo laner here, or even a traditional jungler, and instead move toward their ADC as they did, now that they have no clue, uh, Baskin of the boys rather, where this Naja is going to go, so it might shift up their bands just a little bit. And Chernabog is locked in, and... Band Achilles, I think that's smart. Brandon Balls was kind of a last bastion of hope in a few of those fights for Trick Babushka in Game 1. The Executes, I wouldn't say they're 100% in Game 1, but they were hitting often enough to make a difference in a lot of those fights. Plenty of double kills for the Achilles. So Baskin and the boys just trying to pull themselves maybe a small advantage in that solo lane. Gonna be tough, though, up against an Osiris. Absolutely a difficult lane opponent there in the solo. It is. Osiris is one of the most dominant gods, and he has been since his release. But if anyone's going to be able to fight into yeah, right? Osiris, it's King Arthur, Chaddix. I mean, he's so comfortable in that character. Kind of strange to me that it made it through all the way to that ninth pick slot. But it is picked up. Kali picked up by Trick Babushka. So they do have some of these bridge gods in Osiris and Naja to get them towards this late game. But Kali is going to be a little bit of a non-factor until she gets two or three items online. It looks to me like Trick Babushka is going to slot Naja on that support role that you so aptly called out instantly. Maybe if you were on the BNB side, they would have been a little bit luckier with those bands instead banning out a support and solo. Well, Trick Babushka have not won a set yet here in the SEC, but they came darn close to winning game number one against Baskin and the boys. Mineral is indeed on that Naja. So, so what a realistic expectation. So you see a Naja locked in. Obviously, once the wind fire wheels come online around level 5, I mean, a lot of the engagement you look for, I think, comes through that. What does an early game maybe look like for, for a Najat Guardian? Unbridled aggression. You're going to get healing from the Guardian's Blessing. You're going to get healing from your second ability. Uh, you're going to have some of those four health potions online. You're going to be looking to deal as much damage as you can. If at any point Trick Babushka is able to find a fight outside of a minion wave. That ring bounce is a huge damage output tool in this early game. It's not going to be easy to take that lane, especially considering there's no support starting over there. But instead, both supports being a little bit annoying right now. It, it, this has been interesting, Mifflin. Both uh, junglers starting with their respective hunters on the purple buffs and, and helping secure that over. And it was it was Mineral who secured uh, Trick Babushka's speed buff there, and it was. Gina, who actually went and looked for the engagement. I feel like that's something we've really started to see, though. These junglers helping out the, the hunters on that first purple buff and then moving over to speed a little bit later on. Why maybe a swap in the mentality here as far as jungle routes go? Uh, we saw that the SPL did it. It's a good way to make sure that you're not getting invaded on by the enemy support. It won't slow you down nearly as much. Instead, letting Mineral take it out there. The supports aren't going to have too much of an XP deficit. Mineral got his own buff, and now he's looking at Gino in a little bit of trouble. No one's there to help. Oh, and Yuji has the lead, but so does Mast. But it is first blood nonetheless. Gino overstays just a little bit longer. Trick Babushka, they strike first off an invade gone wrong from Gino. But I feel like we have this conversation a lot, Mifflin. It's not necessarily the end of the world if you lose first blood, especially if it's Mineral getting the kill onto your support. It, it sure is not a death sentence. I mean, that's part of the expectation when you go into the enemy jungle as a level one support is, I'm going to be able to slow them down, but I might lose my life as well. Unfortunately, instead of slowing down the enemy jungler, he slows down Mineral, and not even that much. As you said, Mineral picks up that first blood, so the enemy jungler in Big Yuji is able to find his farm elsewhere on the map, and Mineral is able to pick up his and a kill. That's a complete loss for Baskin and the boys. Mast was in range to try and help, maybe try to counter gank some of that, but nothing ended up coming of it for Baskin and the boys. So it is Mineral who does end up striking first here, and now look to assert his dominance elsewhere, and... Still wearing that, that uh, speed buff, but now finally, and this is sort of the, the start that I maybe expect, is you give maybe that early speed over to your guardian. In this case, it's a Naja, so it's weird calling it a guardian, but uh, your, your support maybe is the better term for it. And then usually it's that second wave of speed buffs that your jungler is able to wrap, wrap around and, and take for themselves. You won't catch me giving up any speed buffs ever as Shadow Chase nope. sees some aggression from Raijin. He walks out. Yeah, I'm a selfish jungler. Uh, I like moving fast, and I don't care if my team loses the game off the back of it. I'm going to get that speed buff regardless of the situation. 
Um, UG this time is gonna subscribe to that mentality, but at least not for the first one this game. Meerkat, as we mentioned in picks and bans on the uh, on the Jing Wei, and I, I think it was an interesting build, not necessarily in a bad way from day to remember, but we, we've had all these conversations around crit and what's good and what's bad, what's over priority on crit, what's under priority on crit. And at the end of the day, if I'm remembering correctly, it was only the rage that day to remember picked up on that Jing Wei. All said and done, did that route make some sense? Oh, it did. It absolutely does, especially considering the Spectral Armor pickup we saw last game, which is going to cancel out a lot of that crit damage. We've seen that that item got a buff recently, and it does a fantastic job of shutting down a, a lot of that additional damage that you would get from crit. So maybe we saw, see a shift again towards this more pen-focused, more lifesteal-focused build on these hunters, so they could take these long, sustained fights. Yeah, there, there were a lot of... both hunters, I believe, had a Titan's Bane by the end of the game last game, and, and the penetration items online as well, and... A lot of it down the stretch was Meerkat and Data Remember pouring out damage, so obviously build choices seem to be effective, kind of regardless of defensive options from the enemy front line. I am interested, though, in, in you know what we saw from Shadow Chair last game on, on the Raijin, and we're going to see him again, though, for Baskin this time around. I mean, late game, you talk about late game damage. That Raijin, once he gets some items online, he's going to just pour damage out into your entire team. You want to talk about late game in general. Yes, Raijin, especially Baskin, is going to be able to deal a ton of damage. We saw it last game from Shadow Chair, able to melt through Chaddix and those late game engagements. But Mast is only going to continue to get stronger as an AoE yep. ultimate to keep people CC'd. Geno is going to be able to be a, a, a fantastic pick character, finding these late game taunts as well. I mean, Haddix does have a mid game focus on that King Arthur and Meerkat. I mean, Jingwei's a hunter in the late game with a nice AoE steroid. These guys have fantastic late game and they didn't sacrifice much in the mid to early. The second any of them hit level 5, all of them are going to come online. Take a peek at Trick Babushka though, they may have backloaded their late game a little bit more. Kali is going to be absolutely unstoppable in the late, as is Merlin. King Arthur is going to be a fantastic engagement tool. The, uh, either way, whoever gets the early game lead is going to be benefiting a lot in this match. Big Huji, I just think it's been rotating so effectively, stealing away the Baskin and the boys' blue buff here. So Brandon Balls, either that one's just going to time out, or maybe Brandon Ball, or uh, yeah, Brandon Balls moves forward and takes it. But the gank is on here in the solo lane. Windfire wheels from Mineral will pull Haddix up to the sky. Good fear, no evil from Mass. Maybe extends out this fight a little bit, and Haddix lands the ultimate immediately upon landing on the ground. Instead, it's still just one kill for Trick Babushka, and it's Mineral who benefits yet again. That was so well played from Haddix to try and keep himself alive as long as he could. The Using the ultimate to remove himself from the play field, maybe he didn't trust that Mask ultimate Fear No Evil was going to be able to peel him out well enough. Unfortunately, no return kill for Baskin and the boys. Now 2-0 for Trick Babushka. Baskin, however, fighting a ton Whoa. of aggression. Whoa, he wants to take this fight and maybe he's better off for it. Finds a kill into the wall, goes Data Remember. Out he comes. Mineral is here to try to save the day, but Data Remember might not have needed it. Talk about aggression. Baskin moves into the back line, grabs himself a kill, but he does end up getting traded out as Data Remember strikes for his first time in this game. He does. I mean, he was just sick of not being on the board as a team. Baskin said, we right. can't go down like Buster's. Got to find at least one, and he does. Fortunately, he picks up the enemy mid laner as well, so the XP deficit won't increase too far. Now a little bit of a 1v1 in that long lane. I think well enough, though. Baskin as well was able to hold on to those beads. 1v1 becomes 1v2 as Mineral awaits in the wings. And, you know, despite it being, uh, you know, te technically a support Naja, you talk about aggression and what Mineral's going to look to do. It's going to hurt so much worse now that you've even gotten two kills on the board. Yeah, two kills online. Teleria Boots is the focus here, forcing the beads out on Meerkat as well. Mineral's playing out of his mind. I imagine we will see the Thieves picked up very soon, or Mineral could look to continue to leverage his early aggression. It is about a thousand gold in his favor, and pick up some additional damage, maybe play a secondary jungle role, and then shift his focus into a more bruiser build later. It'll be interesting to see where he goes with that. But Teleria Boots does tell me that he is trying to keep his focus a little bit more leaning towards that supportive playstyle. Yep. You talk about moving into late game for both teams, and seven and a half minutes in, Trick Babushka have found themselves a one and some change thousand gold lead here, and that's really what Baskin and the boys were able to find maybe a touch earlier in game number one. But with that gold spread out over, over so many different targets, maybe a chunk of it on, on Mineral here at this point, who is the beneficiary of First Blood, 
Baskin and the boys, I think, still have to feel comfortable in maybe taking some fights, and I think you saw that in Baskin. They're, sure, they're certainly not going to shy away despite a slight early game deficit. Yeah, Baskin has found himself a slight XP lead, but take a peek at those supports. Gino, two levels down, and it's hard to find these engagements when your support is the one with such a, a huge sure. deficit. That is the main engaging force, especially it being the Athena dashing in to find a taunt. The taunt's not going to be leveled up too much, so it's not going to create much time. The dash in's going to be down, so it's going to make her a very easy target, especially considering there's no tankiness online just yet outside of that reinforced Greaves. It, it's not going to be easy at all. I mean, Mineral's already got the Thieves fully online. It's going to stack up now, but yep. that is at least some defense, whereas Gino has none. That's right, Gino just a touch behind Mineral as far as builds go, looking for that Thieves first completed item after the boots overall. And just kind of eyeing the builds here, more on that in a second, as Brandon Balls has found a three-man gank in the solo lane, and we'll end up getting away just for a moment before Mast drops down and snags the second kill of the game for Baskin and the boys. So now the Hoonbats is on board. But back to kind of my previous point, uh, Rod of Tahuti picked up first overall from Baskin. I believe it was a Doom Orb that Shadow Chair started off last game on the Raijin. Uh, a huge power spike there, obviously, picking up the Rod of Tahuti first overall. Yeah, it's a ton of power as well as the pass is going to make it easier to finish off some of these kills. And that dot from Raj is going to benefit a lot, but red buff now seeing some aggression from Kali. Seems like Big Yuji was able to steal it away, not quite sure. But Baskin having his ultimate force here is huge. That's going to be a huge component of these team fights falling away. If Trick Babushka decide to force this fight around the gold tree, they might have a bit of an advantage, especially considering the lead that we're seeing on Yuji himself. The Crusher is online now, so Kali is able to deal some relevant damage. You will likely see a Hasten Katana come online next. The longer this game goes and the longer it remains equal in gold and XP, I have to favor Trick Babushka in the late. And I like the way you bring up objectives there as well, and I think that's a good conversation to have, especially when usually the, these first big sweeping team fights of the game happen around this Gold Fury. You know, you, you give your edge one way or the other on, on the team fight, but talk about like objective secure just in general. I mean, obviously plenty of burn for Trick Babushka between Day to Remember, Shadow Chair as well, and that Merlin can burn it down these objectives quickly, and Baskin and the boys have some of that as well. Is there a real opportunity, though, for either side to kind of swoop in and take these a big execute and maybe steal away an objective, or, or are both teams maybe looking to fight first, secure objective second? They're definitely looking to fight first. I mean, if you want to talk about it, Mineral is going to be able to find his dive very easily onto the enemies, but if you take a peek at just the burn potential, they both have it, but neither team has any true confirmed potential. Baskin on this Raijin doesn't have any huge burst ability to slow down these uh, steals from Trick Babushka, and neither does Shadow Chair, but Trick Babushka does have a bit more burn because it is that Merlin in the middle lane, so if they do find an opening to move in towards this gold, they can definitely take it away very quickly, but the second any sort of contention shows up, both teams should shift their focus towards the fight afterward. And if a team fight erupts right now, five versus five, I have to give it to Baskin and the boys, purely off of the back of Mast on this monkey, going to be able to use that AoE ultimate, as well as the damage from Baskin. Well, I don't, I don't see as slow as this early game has started. I don't know if I see a big sweeping team fight starting up just yet. It's really been kind of back to slow poke, engagements here in the short lane and maybe some small engagements over in the solo lane both teams playing a bit more passively here 11 minutes and 45 seconds into it and, and i think it's interesting to maybe look at who's the beneficiary of that big ug obviously assisting in a couple of the kills but is is there so much backloaded late game for baskin and the boys that they're okay with this one taking a little bit longer to really wind up it's hard to say it's hard to give anyone late game when there is a Kali on the enemy team, but Baskin and the boys' team fight is so good at any point in the game. The second they can get all their tools together, Gino burning beads, Mask burning beads, as well as all the damage coming out from Baskin and his front line out of Haddix. If they do hit that late game a little bit, they should be able to take the fight. It's whether or not they can respond well to this Kali. Here we go, Mifflin. Haddix has found the windfire wheels onto himself. A nice taunt in from Gino has maybe set up a great fight for Baskin and the boys. Yuji up into the sky, down he slams Haddix, not able to finish off the kill. A touch of healing from Yuji on the back end of maybe that ultimate keeps him alive, and now Haddix will get shipped away. Gino finds the first kill, but Shadow Chair immediately answers back. 
as Haddix falls one more taunt just short there. Double kill a shadow chair rotates back into this fight. It's a two for one, at least at the moment, when Mineral's still looking for some more. And keep looking, they will. Mineral not quite able to find enough CC to set up Day to find the root. And Jingwei, Meerkat on the other side of the map, continuing to push. He knows that Kali's ultimate's down, so he isn't too afraid to take the fight. But you still do have to put some respect on that assassin. Not quite able to find that tier 1 tower. That fight does go the favor of Trick Fushka, and they are going to pick up a Pyromancer on the tail end of it. Now about 2,000 gold in the lead. It's a Pyro, as you mentioned, so quicker out from base if need be. And big beneficiary in that one, the big swing is, I think, Shadow Chair on that Merlin. The double kill will do wonders and carving out a, just a slight advantage over Baskin, who uh, aggressively a few minutes in found himself a kill on that Raijin. So, so differently now, I mean, how, how big of a swing is that realistically, though, for this Merlin? I mean, it's a couple kills online and moving into a little bit of penetration there, I, I think, with the, the second completed item overall. How much more scared are you of this Merlin now if you're basking in the boys? Well, you're about brought yourself to even, Shadow Chair, so maybe not super fearful, but now you do have to be a little bit more concerned in these team fights. whereas beforehand, it had the fight erupted a little bit more in favor of Baskin and the boys. You know that you can rely on Baskin on this Raijin to deal more damage, simply because he had the XP and gold lead, but now that they're at an equal point, their builds are exactly the same, it's not going to be very easy for them to just take mindless fights. Now Baskin finishes off right. that Divine Rune and gets that book one, though. Shadow Chair hasn't quite backed yet, so if a fight does erupt, you still can rely on Baskin, but you can't let Shadow Chair back and spend that gold. This is another game, we look at big picture, where Trick Babushka have kept themselves even 15 minutes in, which is, I think, all we could really ask of them, not because of, of who Trick Babushka is, but because of all the success we've seen from Baskin and the boys. So despite losing game one, I, I think, regardless of the outcome here of game two, you have to be somewhat happy with what you've seen from Trick Babushka. Oh, Trick Babushka have been performing out of their minds, absolutely. I mean, we saw the standings going into this. They were, what, bottom seed, no wins, and Baskin and the boys are the team to beat. Now picking up that gold three despite the Whoa. vision, and they burn it very easily. Yeah. <laughs> Discipline, smart play. Yeah, talk about objective burn there. They, they just force out one from Trick Babushka and turn their eyes to the gold fury. Maybe a fight starting to spark up here on the back end of the secured objectives by Baskin and the boys who have shortened that gold lead to about 500. Shadow Chair, not enough kills in the world would get you out of that one. Mast shuts him down. Second kill of the game onto the Hoon Bats. That's a big swing, admittedly, for Baskin and the boys evening up this gold. I love the communication that I can hear in my mind's eye from Baskin and the boys there. Mast spots out Shadow Chair out of position, says, hey guys, his flicker's down and he's alone and Mineral, or Gino rather, immediately says, okay, let's go get him. Pops his Heavenly on his boys and they run him down off the back of that gold tree as well. What was a lead for Trick Babushka is now slightly in favor of Baskin and the boys. It's not big enough to really be noteworthy, but that is a swing in favor of them. Now that neutral objective is no longer available for Trick Babushka to pick up either. So it's gonna return back to a state of farming on the map, which we've been comfortable seeing 16 minutes in, only nine kills. That's right, that's right, a much slower pace than what we saw 15 minutes into game number one, and I mean, literally uh, dead even as far as gold, as, far as gold goes. But I, I still think, I mean, we, we've talked about so many late game potentials, obviously between the Hoon Bats, uh, you know, the Raijin, and, and Hunters maybe just by nature start to swing themselves online in towards this late game, but mirrored in the builds now are, are Meerkat on the Stingway and Data Remember on the Chernabog. Is one of those two maybe stand out to you as all right, as far as this game goes, when the late game starts to hit, I'm more excited about having Jing Wei or Chernabog on my team at full build. At full build, if they continue to have the exact same build, it depends, right? If Chernobog gets a lead, his ultimate is going to be incredibly useful, but using Chernobog ult on the back foot is incredibly hard to do. If you're trying to escape a fight with it, you can only TP to an enemy. But a little fight erupts as Mineral sees some aggression. So Oracle's locked down, but at what cost? And for now, it's just the fear no evil, as Mineral has to use uh, his ultimate there as well for some disengage. So fear no evil exchanged for Windfire Wheels, but it is Oracle's locked down by Baskin and the boys. And with as slow as this game has gone, Mifflin, that might as well be a, a huge objective picked up. It is. They also picked up Mineral's beads there, so he's a little bit unsafe now, has to be worried about any engagement he takes. 
I think it's worth pointing out, take a peek at Kali's build. This is substandard for sure. Normally we would see an auto attack focus or at least a hasten katana so they can stick to the enemies. Instead electing to pick up that third item transcendence and what I can only imagine is going to be a, a, a Hydra star coming in late. Uh, this is very interesting. It seems to me that this Kali is very burst focused and that's not something you often see. I mean, talk about mirrored builds. Solo laners, exact same builds. Junglers going the exact same route. Both hunters on the same exact path. Mid laners, aside from the first item, same exact. I mean, really the big difference build-wise is in that uh, support role. And Mineral, speaking of supports, is going to engage on a meerkat, but nothing will come of it. But I think it's at least an interesting note that pretty much across the board outside of the supports, we've seen some mirrors build-wise. It looks to me like we got some copycats in this game. Meerkat under this, some aggression under his tower. Day doesn't quite have it. Dash is in. Ooh, nice knock up there. And the reinforcements are in for Baskin and the boys. Some fireworks begin as Mineral slam down. No ultimate for the Naja, but low health, low mana. Not fast enough to get back. Day to remember takes to the sky and down he goes back behind Gino and suddenly Trick Babushka are able to reinforce this fight. Mast goes right back in, Yuji stuns him down, but the ire of Baskin and the boy's eye is forced to leap out over the wall back by this tier two tower. Baskin, he's here to party as well, and that's both actives used by Shadow Chair, the Merlin, the eventual death, 50 second death timer, kills are even, gold still just about even, and after all that, it's just one kill. Just one kill, but likely a mid tower and then a pyromancer off the back of it. Yuji was forced to use his beads there. It's not safe to contest. Brandon Ball's on the receiving end of a ton of damage. He got taunted in there, and luckily tanky and sustainy enough on that Osiris that he can stay alive. Unfortunately, the tower does not have the same stats as an Osiris and does end up falling. So that second tower of the game picked up by Baskin and the boys and will extend now to about a 1,000 gold lead, the largest swing we've really seen for them up to this point here. And I, I think that's smart play from Baskin and the boys and then maybe why it's slowed down a little bit. They're looking for just that small opening and then realize with just Shadow Chair being down, we've got enough of an advantage to take some more objectives. With Yuji on that Pyromancer, it's going to drop him to low health, especially considering Oni Fury is spawning right now. I'm not sure that's a smart trade. Now that the sound is played, Bask and the boys are aware that Pyro has fallen, but the vision coverage is in favor of Trick Babushka having picked up those oracles. This Oni Fury might be a hot spot. They know that Kali's in that solo side of the map, however, they need to find some sort of aggression or at least send someone over there to stop this push. Well, because once she goes back, she'll zoom right back to the fight quickly enough thanks to that pyromancer and that's what we're seeing the benefit of just now so basket and the boys starting to position themselves around this fury as we take a quick pause before we jump back in surprised though at the pacing of this game at all mifflin i mean not that game one was, was like off i mean there was four kills in like five minutes so maybe it was a fast start slowed down some towards the mid game i don't think i'm overextending at all by saying this one has been a much slower game from what we saw in game number one not only is it just slow compared to game number one, it's slow compared to the entirety of the North American scene. Europe, I would have expected to see this. North America, not even a little bit. We like our mud battles over here. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to see it quite yet. Haddock's in the air? Yeah, fresh off the pause, Haddock's mineral ulted to the sky and day to remember benefits there. And second kill on the board for that Chernabog. And in a game of, of really these one small one kill advantages back and forth, that's the only key trick Babushka need to burn down this Oni Fury. They will end up securing it. Gino was in range to try to counter engage. And that's a great fear no evil from Mass to send a couple running. And the health bar is taken low by Trick Babushka, or by Baskin and the boys onto Trick Babushka. Big UG used the ultimate, well timed by Baskin to wait for it to time out. But the engagement continues. Mineral has gone right back in. Gino tries to counter taunt. Air strike from Meerkat takes to the skies. Data remember turns around to kill onto Gino. Mast is there to find the kill. Still messy, Mifflin. Shadow Chair might end up falling as well as Baskin will blink in. I think across the board, that's about a three for three. Might even become a four for three here. And Brandon is able to finish off the kill. He gets the stun, gets the kill onto Baskin. Sudden aggression all at once. Yeah, very sudden as well. 
Baskin and the boys do a good job of finding some sort of return after that gold fury gets stolen away. Unfortunately, Meerkat disengages a little bit too quickly and wasn't able to peel out Baskin. Now Brandon Ball is able to move in very easily with Mineral on his heels. Meerkat going to see some aggression here. No ultimate available to escape if they do choose to die, but Masked on the side won't let it happen. Chaddix finally sees himself a respawn and he's going to go back to farming up. Maybe realize he isn't quite as tanky as he was last game just yet. But look at this damage from Meerkat. Yeah, they had so much damage onto Brandon Balls, who drops down some healing, but a taunt in, thanks to a nice Athena ult. Chino rejoins the fight, and Meerkat snags his first kill of the game, and maybe finishing off with a Titan's Bane there as well, just to complete the mirror as far as Hunter builds go. And that's a big swing, I think, for Meerkat to get his first kill of the game. Yeah, Meerkat looked Brandon Balls in his size, said, Whoop, show some respect. <laughs> and puts him in the dirt. I mean, Meerkat looking like he's able to do a ton of damage. Hasn't quite had the opportunity to use it yet, but look at his build. It's almost complete. The only thing left now is to get rid of that Hunter's Blessing. So much damage available. We could see him move in to towards some additional life steal or even towards some additional attack speed if he so chooses. But instead, it looks like they're going to move in towards this Fire Giant. And it is Fire Giant getting burnt quickly by Baskin and the boys. We'll be half health before you know it and Trick Babushka I mean, they're wary of it, but I'm not sure they they think they can do much about it. They're, you're hoping for a steal. Data, remember, has the ultimate to rejoin the fight. Masked so low, Baskin and the boys confirm the FG, but Big UG through the ultimate finds his target back to full health. Goes the Kali, so it's a one for none on the back end of a fire giant secured by Baskin and the boys. Haddix could make it a two for none if Trick Babushka are able to close that gap. When fire wheels for Mineral say yes, please, and it's three now taken down for Baskin and the boys. Too strong on the fire giant. Trick Babushka, they might be looking for Tier 2s. They could definitely take Tier 2s. They can move in towards mid afterward. I mean, there's 40 seconds on the spawn from Baskin to the boys. Yes, you got the Fire Giant, but for three members and no return kills off the back end of it, uh, I mean, you can't be feeling pretty about it. This Phoenix is going to be very easy to siege. Mass doesn't have his ultimate available. I mean, an Athena without any true burst damage to back up that taunt isn't that valuable. They should be able to slow it down, but they're praying for the next 10 seconds until Baskin respawns. Gino has taunted a couple underneath this right side Phoenix. Five seconds now on the Baskin respawn. Phoenix chipped away, and that is going to get taken down. Trick Babushka, without any casualties, take this right side Phoenix and are able to move away, and not a moment too soon as Baskin, Haddix, and Meerkat soon to be rejoining that fight. So I guess when it's all said and done, I mean, Baskin and the boys do still have two Fire Giant buffs on themselves. Could have been a lot worse if all five members of Baskin and the boys had died. But nonetheless, it's a right side Phoenix that's taken down and, you know, maybe a net win over to Trick Babushka just for map control. Oh, absolutely a net win. They closed the gold lead. They're 3,000 up now. Fire Giant removed from the majority of Baskin and the boys means that they don't have to worry about this neutral objective anymore. The buff now only on Masked and Geno. Yes, those are nice targets to have that Fire Giant, but generally you do want your hunter Meerkat to have it as well to be that objective burning powerhouse that you would expect out of a hunter i don't imagine we see trick babushka continue the aggression right now considering there is still two members with fire giant we might see baskin and the boys group up and try and strip away those solo side towers and at the same time keep these fire minions out of their base but they have to be wary about this gold deficit now 2000 in favor of trick babushka gold free is also spawning soon this is a, a, a precarious situation to say the least I agree, but we, we saw Baskin and the boys in a similar situation in game number one. Maybe not a whole 2k deficit, but at least map control, you know, lane control, lane pressure, not necessarily in their favor with two Phoenixes taken down before they were able to snag three of their own. That's a few no evil on to Brandon Balls, and Baskin is in range to provide a little extra damage as well. Thorns active used, final barrel not enough, but Meerkat swoops on in. And gets the kill and has the airstrike to disengage with as well. Well played from Meerkat on that Jing Wei, towing that line so effectively. So Brandon Ball's gone for 50 or so seconds. Only Haddix has his ultimate. Gino has his as well. Four ultimates though for Trick Babushka. Make it three. Wind fire wheels used by minerals to pull Mast up to the sky. Shadow Chair says, see you later. Gino has maybe found a taunt on a mineral who's stu still doing a large bit of engagement. Data Remember swoops back in thanks to his ultimate. Meerkat back from base, fully healthy. Shadow Chair snags another kill. Baskin and the boys down two members. Trick Babushka looking towards this mid lane tower. 
I mean, these fights are so sloppy from Baskin and the boys. They get the pick, they don't disengage afterward, and instead find two returned onto them. Now losing the tier one tower, and the tier two should go uncontested. Fire minions are flooding into your Phoenix on the other side of the map. Gold Fury is spawning as well. Trick Babushka have free reign of the map. They could continue their aggression towards this Phoenix, or they could back up. Gino is going to have to back up, but it is mid lane Phoenix under priority. Meerkat collapsed on by five members of Trick Babushka. Baskin is in off respawn and might find a kill here on a day to remember, but lockdown, big UG, double kill here. Could be the game if Trick Babushka find enough of an advantage. Gino escaping with his life, masked back on the respawn, Titan under attack, Trick Babushka a few attacks away from tying up this set. Mineral is just gonna send one to the skies. Titan taken down, Trick Babushka. We're headed to a game three. I love the idea there. The second mass spawns, they know that AoE Fear No Evil will stop a lot of the aggression onto the Titan. So what is traditionally just a BM play, which is diving a dude on spawn, they actually do it rightfully so to stop him yep. from stopping them. I mean, not often you get to see something like that. And I love Trick Babushka finally making good on some of the advantages that they've bought themselves, especially in a matchup that is completely top versus bottom as far as standings go. So, so I love to see that kind of momentum shift here for, for Trick Babushka. And I think a large difference, Haddix, on this King Arthur. Talk about a polar opposite game from what we saw in game number one. Trick Babushka, I think, did a brilliant job of mitigating this King Arthur. They did. Chaddix didn't get any opportunity to get off the ground. I mean, that is so good for Trick Babushka to find, what was that, their first W in the SEC and against this team? That's got to be a huge momentum swing for them. And now going into Game 3, they have to be feeling absolutely ecstatic. Yeah, and I think Shadow Chair again. I mean, talk about a complete flip. I mean, you, you look at his Raijin in Game 1, and it certainly it was not bad by any metric. But I think after... A tumultuous maybe start, some, some muddy waters here and there in this game, getting picked a couple of times by Baskin and the boys. A small advantage became a big advantage for this Merlin, and I think the, the mid laner for Trick Babushka did a brilliant job of helping his team over the finish line. Yeah, any form of CC that came out was immediately followed up by Shadow Chair. That Merlin was able to find a ton of damage. Unfortunately, does get picked out a couple times as he doesn't quite understand that the Flicker is not the most fantastic escape possible, but fortunately is able to flip that into a W for the squad. Now, Game 3. This one's been close, and as Mifflin says, we've got a Game number 3 coming at you right after this. And just like that, we're back to the SCC and A. A three-game set here between Trick Babushka and Baskin and the boys. Mifflin, these have been long, drawn-out games. Maybe game one more so than game two. What's it going to take for us to get like a 20-minuter here? Not that I'm complaining, but both of these teams have not seemed comfortable ending a game in sub-30 minutes. I mean, I don't know what exactly it's going to take. Maybe they got to do some lines of G fuel. Maybe Baskin takes the <laughs> weights off of his fingers and starts playing at right. his full potential. There are tons of things that can happen, but we can't fault the players right now. Both teams are playing incredibly no. well. Yes, there are mistakes coming out, but Trick Babushka especially has been impressing me today. I agree. I, I like that point. I think it's less that one team or the other isn't trying to end these games early. It's both teams are doing such a good job of not letting that happen. Game one, it's somehow Baskin and the boys that delay it and, and keep themselves in. Trick Babushka mainly, kind of back and forth. And then game two, maybe sort of the same. But it is game three, and what time awaits, we'll just have to wait and see. Kali locked away for Baskin and the boys. Naja as well. Some, uh, some begrudging bans here, I think, for Baskin and the boys, just not wanting to deal with that same composition. But of course, Mifflin, that opens up the Kamasats. It does. Basketball boys get to run away with Kamazots. Both teams showing a ton of respect here. A little personal meta has evolved throughout this three-game set. I mean, Trick Babushka ban away the Thor, the X-Ball taken away from Meerkat and Mast, respectively. I mean, the Kali and the Naja, as you pointed out, are both targeted bans as well. So many meta picks still available, and Osiris and Merlin are picked up by Trick Babushka when Jingwei has been prioritized so heavily throughout this set. No surprise to me that she's picked up by Baskin and the boys. Yeah, and I'm, you know, while I do love what Trick Babushka have drafted for their first three, Osiris, Merlin, and that Hercules as well for, for some good aggression, 
Baskin and the boys have locked in, I, I would say, three of the, the highest priority picks here. Not that Trek Babushka haven't, but but you look at what Akumba Karna can do to change these games. A Kamazatsu, even sometimes from behind, can put his stamp in the early, mid, late game in a Jingwei as well. While Trick Babushka haven't drafted poorly by any means, I think Baskin and the boys have set themselves up particularly well. What an interesting pickup that Sir Nunos. You don't often see him. That is not an incredibly safe god, so if that Kamazots is slotted towards the jungle, it's going to be hard to escape him. Only a, a standard yep. dash coming out from Sir Nunos, so Kamazots able to chase that down incredibly easily. Goodness, okay. what a comp from Trick Babushka. Hebo <laughs> jungle? I'm going to go ahead and Yeah, guess. dissect it oh. for me, Mifflin, right? <laughs> Uh, Merlin mid, uh, Sir Nuno's ADC, Hebo jungle, easy for me. Uh, let's go into the game so I can look stupid. I'm crossing my fingers that one of those is swapped, but I would agree. If I were to make an educated guess, I'd say something similar. And it is indeed the Hebo in the jungle. And of the times we've seen Hebo Mifflin, it has been mid lane here, I think, more recently. What does a Hebo jungle bring to the table? What are realistic expectations here in game number three? Uh, realistically, we're going to expect Big Yuji to do absolutely nothing up until level 5, and then he's going to bring damage, damage, and damage. That's it. That's all Hebo brings outside of a little bit of a speed boost and slow in his second ability. I mean, he's been sometimes been uh, deemed the god of triple ultimates. All his ability is able to do so much, and that one on such a low cooldown. It's interesting to point out that he is starting on the purple side of the map, and it seems like Baskin and the boys have already adapted to this start, sending Gino there instead of interrupting that support on the speed buff. And I think that's what we expect from maybe any Guardian or any support, but maybe a Kumbakarna in general, probably one of the best, if not the best in the game, at kind of disrupting some of that early game presence in the jungle. And you brought it up, Mifflin, I think when you saw the Kurnanos locked in, you, you kind of reeled a little bit. Uh, he is trading back some good damage despite a one-level deficit. Uh, but why maybe a lack of Kurnanos here in, in the recent games we've seen? He's just not so focused on right now. I mean, his passives are nice. Oh, oh I mean, he's, he's really giving it the Meerkat right now, forcing out an early beads. Maybe I don't slander this god before he pops off. But Gino on the back end might be able to return that beads pool. He's going to look for the root. Mineral back in range as well. So a duo lane, as is tradition here, as the supports have rotated themselves back on through. But there are no kills just yet. But that does open up a new door, I think, Mifflin. Beads burnt. For Meerkat, you know, you talk about maybe early ganks. It is a uh, 130 seconds until that respawn. Talk about an early gank. His mast has found Shadow Chair, and now that Kamazot's in the jungle for Baskin and the boys. What a rotation for a mast to get himself first blood. Yeah, giving Kamazots to Mask is not something you would ever see me do in a million years. For my money, I say it every time I see him in a cast. Uh, He's my favorite god. I think he's the strongest. His sustain and damage output is absolutely nuts. I mean, you can do disrespectful stuff like this. Ugh. Just not quite enough damage. But he is going to force Big Yuji back to base here, slowing down his farm. Going to be able to get a slight XP lead for Mask. I mean, the second he does that at level 3 between your towers, you're not able to do anything about right. it. The damage output, absolutely wild. At level 5, he's going to be able to exit the play field, almost similar to a Freya ultimate style ability. Going to be able to swoop through, do as much damage as you can with Battle to Hell. I mean, this god is so strong. And I am curious, Mifflin, because I think when we've seen Kamazots in the solo lane, it's sort of a, a hybrid, bruisery type build that we maybe see from him. Do you expect just, just full-blown damage here from, from Mast now that he's found himself an early kill here in this game? And maybe a kill for Trick Babushka as well. Gino taken down into that passive. Mineral is going to swing away, but it's day to remember who snags the first kill of the game for Trick Babushka. But sort of back to that thought, uh, does Mast just go full-blown damage here and try to pour out as much as he can? I would not be surprised in the slightest if we see a complete assassin build come out of Mask. I mean, you don't get to see it often out of the soul lane, and soul lane, I think, is his best role because Kamazots fits that bruiser uh, aesthetic so well. However, we don't see it often. His damage output, when he is actually itemized towards being an assassin, is insane. It's second to none. The additional power from the Echo on his one is going to be compounded by the fact that he's actually building damage. Well, let's hold that thought as Geno sees some aggression. <laughs> Gino just died, just came back from base, and may fall again, but not this time. Instead, Shadow Chair looking for just a little bit too much. Baskin takes to the ultimate and shuts down Shadow Chair for the second time this game.
So the same matchup as we saw in game number two, but Baskin this time is able to find himself an early lead. A little bit of tunnel vision from Shadow Chair there, and giving Baskin a lead is not smart, but look at Mask. He's baiting that red buff out. He looks like he wants to find the kill. Mast is over by that red buff, but he does so much damage. He's just going to ignore Mineral here and finds the kill on the big Yuji. This is terrifying. If you can't even 2v1 in your own jungle on your own red buff, that is not a place I'm looking forward to being. Extremely big Yuji voice. Bro, Mineral, why did you pull him at me, bro? I was out. And he unfortunately wasn't. 100 damage per swing from Mask. And the surrender vote comes out off the back of it four minutes in. Trick Babushka are not happy. And I, I don't know how you could be. I mean, this has been... I mean, I'm not going to call it disastrous. This is so similar to what we saw in game number one. And Trick Babushka kind of carved themselves back into that one. But such a jungle deficit and a deficit in the mid lane as well. It's going to be a tough one for Trick Babushka to climb themselves back into. I mean, maybe you're hanging your hat on the fact that Data Remember isn't getting blown out of the water over there on the long lane. You could definitely shift your focus over towards long, but when you have a jungler like Hebo, it's going to be very difficult to get yourself back into this match. He's not very good from behind. Haddock's finding a fantastic cage. Yeah, locks him in. We finally get to see some Odin again. Big Yuji, the recipient of that up, down, and Haddox will shield himself from any further damage. Mast swoops through, finds his third kill of the game now on this Kamazot's killing spree for the Baskin and the boys jungler. And Haddox stays alive, could look for a re-engagement here. Hercules will toss the boulder out, Mast low mana, but plenty of damage, and that is another kill on the board for Baskin and the boys. This one is getting out of control early here, Mifflin. Yeah, closing up to about 1,500 gold in the lead six minutes into the game. No objectives dropped. Every tower is still available. Every neutral objective is still available. I mean, Baskin and the boys are just getting the better end of every single engagement. And it, for the most part, it's off the back of Mask. I mean, he's got four out of five kill participation. He's just popping off. He's fighting all this damage between towers alone, all these enemy buffs alone. I mean, that's the power that Kamazots can bring. And he's already getting online so quickly, he's almost got what I can only assume is going to be a Brawler's Beat Stick online. He's level 7 to Big Yuji's level 5, who's on this late game hyper carry mage in the Hebo. So this early game already was going to be weak, but now that he's got an XP deficit as well, it's only going to be weaker. I've loved what I've seen out of Haddox on this Odin as well. I mean, it was only a small engagement there. Got a kill, got an assist, but... With how kind of in and out of the, the band, I think a lot of people still trying to figure out where Odin should stand after stand after recent number changes. He's still powerful. I mean, the core of that kid is a, a stun in a cage that locks you in when you don't want to be locked in. So I think you, you put Odin in the hands of Haddox, and he's going to do exactly what we've seen him do here about seven minutes in. Yeah, Odin's playstyle has remained largely unchanged. He, he is still a big asset in these fights off the back of that cage, but... Look at that damage! Day, you poor, poor man! There, there is a, a mask mark every single lane, every single jungle camp in this map. There's a, a blood pool there on the right-hand side, and Mast has just made his way about everywhere here, seven minutes into this game, and four kills on the board for a Kamazots, and it's interesting to see the way I worded it in picks and bans. I'm like, yeah, Kamazots can have an impact on a game, even when he's slightly behind Talk about a game where, where your Kamazots is 4-0, 5-0, seven and a half minutes in. Bad to worse here for Trick Babushka. That's a good mez by Gino. It was a three versus two fight here on the right-hand side. Uh, you know, spiraling is the only word that I can think of to use here for, for what's going on with Mast on this Kamazots. Yeah, I mean, I can only classify giving Mask Kamazots as a misplay. You've already misplayed before the match has even started. I mean, <laughs> look at that! Y Yuji, buddy, you're, you go back to base, okay? You're about nearly dead now. Mask level 9, not willing to stop discretion at all. And the buffs are spawning for Trick Babushka right now, so if Mask goes back into that jungle, who's going to stop him? Nobody. Yeah, I'm not sure anyone does, and, and it's so sneaky. I mean... Go back now, likely to spend a lot of that gold. He's been, he's been effectively sitting on the same three starter items for the last few minutes. Just because he's done so much fighting, Mast hasn't been able to back off to, to base and, and complete anything. There you go. The next tier of items move on through. So I think if you're Trick Babushka, some lucky timing there that Big Huji can come back from base and ask, actually have some buffs remaining. 
But at this point in this game, I mean, seven, six of the kills affected by Mast, five of them secured by Mast. It's going to take a miracle, I, I think, to come back into this one if you're Trick Babushka. We have seen some over-aggression maybe from Baskin and the boys, and maybe that's where Trick Babushka are able to find an advantage in turning some of those over-aggressive fights. Yeah, they're certainly waiting to pick up anything here, but look at that damage come out again. <laughs> that Crusher in full stride with the additional attack speed. What was that? Two abilities and two autos, and now your Herc's removed from the game. Gold Free now started up, about 30% left on the health bar, and Trick Mabushka started to move in, and then realized, wait, no, their Camazots is over there, I don't want any part of it, and they leave, now moving to the enemy jungle, trying to pick up what they can, but... 3,000 gold, close to 4,000 now in favor of Baskin and the boys. All this damage online and XP lead for everybody. We've been focusing on Mask. It's still two levels up is Baskin. Rod of the Hootie already done. Um, two, a level up for Meerkat as well. Things are going poorly for Trip Babushka. And somehow that seems like an understatement here 10 minutes into the game. And maybe that's the most surprising. Gino, maybe a kill pulled back, but... Just short of the knockback there from Mineral into the passive he goes, but Mast is here, and this is, you know, maybe not an even fight despite the numbers advantage for Trick Babushka. Mast is taken low, Bat out of Hell will swoop him away. There is still damage despite a large discrepancy for Trick Babushka. Haddix is going to lock in Mineral and will look for the final shot. Mast from over the wall will find the seventh kill <gasps> of the game. Data remember into the fight and gets the kill onto Meerkat. Big Yuji shuts down Mast. Haddix is there though to snag a kill. And maybe that's what you look for if you're Trick Babushka. A two for two fight. I mean, that fight went as well as they could have hoped for Trick Babushka, that is, finding the two for two. Especially off the back of Yuji missing literally everything. I mean, I I can't word that any nicer. The three didn't land. The one afterward didn't land. The ultimate straight into a wall. My man is concussed from running into it. And this entire time, Mass now seven and one. I, I'm sure he's not too concerned. Yeah, I, I'm just fine being seven and one up to this point. Baskin is somewhat low here. But I think that, that this is the sort of composition from Baskin and the boys. It's not even as a team, if you're Trick Babushka, you say, it's all right, like, we, we scale later into the game. I mean, you talk about this early of a lead for Baskin and the boys on a team that seemingly just gets better. It's going to take a lot more of those even fights and maybe finding a one-kill advantage here or there for Trick Babushka to have a chance. Yeah, Trick Babushka does have a hyper late game focus, especially considering it's a Hebo jungle, but oh my goodness, Mineral Buddy. Look at this damage. I mean, Mask is having a field day. At this point, no one's going to fight him. One versus three, I would still bet money that Mask walks out for any three members of Trick Babushka that shows up. I mean, this is looking bad and it's only getting worse. Now, eight and one. It's part of 10 out of 11 kills. Yep. I think at this point we could just put Mast gets a kill or Mast assists on a kill on a loop for me and just press a button and play it every few minutes. Big UG with a chance to turn another one around and hits that one and Mast does fall for the second time this game. So despite eight kills for Mast and that's nothing you can scoff at, Big UG does have three kills on a Hebo that will do a very good job at deleting some squishies once he's able to get some items. And that bounty gold is actually huge for Yuji. The additional gold and XP from killing someone so large has closed up that level gap. Maybe the, uh, the gold is a little bit more. I can't quite see it yet. But this is insane that Yuji's able to keep up with that game. I mean, yes, Mass does slightly misplay there by moving into the jungle towards him. But, I mean, he almost turned it around. Had Mask found the first ability there, that would have been probably half of Yuji's health bar. So we can't slight him in the least. I think it's interesting, uh, you know, looking at the, that large gold differential and the majority of it, you know, maybe in the jungle, but, but the mid lane as well. I mean, so much of this game has rolled through Mast, but you look at a two-level lead in the mid lane for Baskin, Shadow Chair has just kind of gotten sat on here in the mid lane. I mean, not a, we've obviously gassed up Mast for good reason, but kind of the, the fallout from that is now Baskin having a large lead here in this mid lane. Yeah, Baskin is big chillin' at 1-0-5, a two-level lead on the 0-3 Merlin. I mean, uh, he hasn't had to really make waves himself, uh, but he is relaxing completely and pulling ahead. Uh, this is coasting at the top level, ladies and gentlemen. Baskin making it look so easy. 
What are you kind of coasting for, though? Because I do sort of sense that from Baskin and the boys. Meerkat has to use the beads as Mineral looked for the gank, but he's able to stay alive. But look at the collapse from Baskin and the boys. Gino walking over a ward, so spotted out by Trick Babushka. The blink through into the Mez. Day to remember. A late set of beads there, but Gino is knocked back. Mast is here. Eight kills ready to roll. Big UG with three of his own will fly on through. Down into the passive goes Gino immediately cleaned up. So... Four kills now for Big UG, as he is starting to found, find a resurgence here about 15 minutes in. And he's starting to hit that critical tipping point where Hebo is absolutely powerful. This has been the story of Baskin and the boys the entirety of the year so far. They dominate this early game handedly. And then immediately afterward, you can see it. The light leaves their eyes. They start losing focus, and these fights start to become more and more even. Well, Haddix is going to lock in Mineral here, and Mast maybe looking for his ninth kill of the game. Blinks through, but nobody on the other end of it swoops through as Big Yuji is going to use his ultimate to chunk down some damage, but not enough to save his life. Mast has that kill. Brandon Balls falls to the hands of Baskin as well. A split fight overwhelmingly in favor of Baskin and the boys. It's three for none. Could get worse, but it looks like instead it'll be the Fury started up and knocked down. Should be an absolutely free gold free. Sir Nunos is the only one anywhere remotely in range, and now that he's been spotted out, he's going to get aggressed on Haddix. No ultimate available as of yet, but this dive could absolutely happen. The dash is down, and Mask behind the tower. I mean, if he lands any of his abilities here, that's going to be all of the health. Well, that's a good Aegis to immune a lot of that early burst damage from Mask, but has plenty to follow up with. But good disengage there, I think, from Day to Remember, and a well-timed Aegis to kind of backload what Mast was looking to do there. Yeah, that was a well-timed Aegis, but instead now, Mineral is the sacrificial lamb. Yes, your Sununos, your ADC made it out alive, but your support falls for, what is that, the fifth time okay. this game? Yeah, yeah, that was the fifth time this game for Mineral. I, I, I do raise my eyebrows at that. Obviously, Mineral may be just trying to stay in range to try to slow down the push from Baskin and the boys there, but I think you got to take the win if you're Trick Babushko. A win, likely at this point in the game, is just going to come in the form of a failed tower dive for Baskin and the boys. So I was surprised not to see Trick Babushka just take that and at least give up the tower. Yeah, I was as well. It seems to me that they are uh, a little bit uh, stunned by how this game has been going. Maybe they are a little dazed as well. They haven't been able to quite react to these engagements as they have been before. A little bit of the Christmas that we saw in these last couple of games in the set have been lost by Trick Babushka. But the same can be said of Baskin and the boys. They aren't playing at the top level, except for Mask. I mean, 9-2, and two, I'm not going to complain about this guy even a little bit. Yeah, tell him uh, that he's not playing at the top level, right? <laughs> yeah, I won't. I wouldn't even walk in the same room as Mask. I'm such a, a beta to this man's alpha. And 9-2, and two, I, I, no one's going to fault me for it, I hope. But nope. we're going to keep our eyes on this fire giant engagement going forward. I mean, 2,000, 3,000 gold lead for Baskin and the boys. 15 and 6 is the slash line 17 minutes in. If they force this fire giant fight, they're going to be able to take it. They don't necessarily have to go for the objective. Agreed. Eyes on FG. Eyes on UG as well. It's maybe a route back into this game for Trick Babushka. Four kills on that Hebo. And in those right moments so far into this game, he's been able to, to keep some fights close. Not even but close, and suddenly it's Brandon Balls that's looking for the fight, but catches an epic uppercut to the chin, and then a few barrels just to put him down. Mast swoops through, 10 kills on the board, 17 minutes in. Baskin's gonna take the double, and suddenly Baskin and the boys have found a brilliant fight in the mid lane and pick up three more kills. Three convincing kills. 30 seconds left on the spawn timers. The towers are being challenged now. They could likely move in towards these phoenixes as the minion wave is coming up, but Gino instead returns to base. They've got so many options now. Mask playing so well. And I am curious, at what point, if you're Baskin and the boys, does Fire Giant become the main target here? You do have to be careful because I think, especially in game one, Similar tones, not quite as heavy as what we're seeing here in Game 3, but Baskin and the boys largely were stalled out after a nice steal, a Fire Giant steal away by Trick Babushka. So I think it's a fight maybe you're okay taking, it's a, an objective you're maybe fine starting up, but you do have to be careful. There's, despite a, a discrepancy, still some damage from Trick Babushka that can totally flip this game on its head in an instant. 
Yeah, if they do give up this Fire Giant, it will give Trick Babushka a slight edge, but not an edge over Baskin of the Boys, just an edge over themselves. Fire Giant isn't going to be enough to get them back in this game. Trick Babushka needs to win some fights, get some of this gold back. 6,000 down at this point? Absolutely nutty. But that being said, if Baskin of the Boys lose, lose Masked or Baskin as a pick in either of these fights, that are two huge raid bosses down, and the damage output is going to fall exponentially. Gino, I think, has been so good at hitting these epic uppercuts through and through, and that's the engagement tool that Baskin and the boys have been looking for, and sometimes it's just masked walking in as the, the other engagement tool here is. Don't need to scratch your eyes. That is 10, 2, and 4 on the Kamazots. Gino blinks through, and a nice mez sets Baskin up for his fifth kill of the game. Shadow Chair forced to use the beads and flicker his way out away beneath the safety of his mid lane Phoenix. And so it's just one kill on the day to remember but it's left side Phoenix, 19 and a half minutes in. Looking like the target here for Baskin and the boys. Water carpet rolled out. Big Yuji maybe finding a flank, and that's some decent damage as well as Mineral rolls through that boulder. Yuji taken low in the back line. Haddix has him locked through, but he swoops away. Meerkat grabs a kill, and Mast has one as well, but Baskin puts Mineral down into the dirt. That's the DSI 20 minutes in, Mifflin, and that may just be the game. You know, I'm going to go ahead and call that the game. They got a minion wave flooding in. Yes, Mass did die. Yes, Baskin and Gino are incredibly low health, but that doesn't matter. This Titan's going to fall. They've got about five seconds to work with until this CERN respawns. And he's immediately mezzed out, forced to use his beads, but that Titan on a quarter health. Yeah, and it's going to get taken down here, Mifflin. Day to remember may get a kill, but Baskin and the boys, they're going to get the win. We asked for a uh, quicker game, and not necessarily out of desire, but wanting just to see a team between these two finally find themselves a clean win. And Baskin and the boys found that, and then some here in game number three. Yeah, you said quicker game, and Mass said, hold my beer as I drop an 11-3 nuke on this lobby. But Baskin <laughs> as well, 6-1-8. and one and eight. I mean, the damage yep. output, he found that huge pick on the day right before that game-ending push. Baskin... Proving that he is the reason that this team is called Baskin and the Boys and not Mass and the Boys. Also tops him out in the damage charts, about 600 ahead of the Mass there. I imagine there was some light razzing in that post-game lobby. And here is a look at the SCC schedule for Phase 1, week number 4. Baskin and the Boys do grab themselves the win, despite it being a bit lengthier over Trick Babushka, Bluegi, and the Wookiees. And Elevate both found themselves a couple two O's. How does that reflect in the standings? That's the next big question. Of course, Baskin and the boys will remain at the top, though. Remember, Mifflin, there were a lot of teams grouped up going into this week. And with that, Baskin and the boys remain on top. Woogie and the Woogie still up top at 4-1. and one. Trick Babushka still searching for that first win. But I got to imagine, though, despite game number three, Mif, from what we've seen from Trick Babushka today, that first win, it's coming eventually. I mean, this team is playing by and far above their grade as far as the standings look. These guys are dominant. They play incredibly well. I mean, we saw it today. They took Baskin and the boys to these, like, hour-long matches constantly. I, I would not be surprised, even in the slightest, if they 2-0 their next opponents. Hey, uh, Mifflin, how does SPL sound to you? Does that sound good? Yes? Uh, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sounds good to Mifflin. Sounds good to me. Stick around, everyone. Sanguine vs. Obey in week one of the SPL right after this break.